Hello, my friends, and welcome to another episode of Adobe Live. I'm your host, Kieran Lewis, a freelance graphic designer based in London. And today's stream, we have Philadelphia-based graphic designer and illustrator extraordinaire, Jacob Paris. Jacob, man, how you doing, bro? Hey, how's it going? I'm good, man. You? Doing well. No complaints. Yeah. Wicked, wicked. Well, um, thank you, first of all, for joining us, wherever you're tuning on, if you're tuning in on Behance or YouTube. Massive, massive welcome. I can see everyone in the chat coming in nice, thick and fast. We've got Jack, we've got D. Got Anika and we've got uh, Becca as well. So massive, massive welcome to you all. Um, as always, I will always put the comments directly from behind straight to Jacob whilst he's designing. Uh, so please do get your comments in there as well. And also share some love, you know, where you guys tuned in from, let us know in the chat. We always love to hear where you're tuning in from too. And before we get into the real flow of, of Jacob and his design process, just two little reminders for you lovely people. Um, if you already missed, um, well, first of all, please subscribe to our Adobe Live channel. Um, and YouTube to stay up to date with our latest streams and participate for our Adobe Live community. Um, and if you've missed the previous stream, you can re we've got the replay on Behance and YouTube, um, and you can check out the photography live stream on the with the weekend creative challenge as they show you the process on retouching and animating a mystical Harry Potter inspired cocktail. Harry Potter, that sounds awesome, right? Uh, so yes, on that note, Jacob, my man, would you like to tell our audience who you are and what you're about and um, what we'll be working on for today's stream? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for the intro. Uh, I'm Jacob. I'm a graphic designer. I screen print a little bit and I also do logo work. I've made uh, basically uh, focus on Illustrator uh, and also dabble with Photoshop and After Effects. Uh, I've been designing for about uh, two years now, but really taking it professionally in the freelance space for about six months. Uh, and I just I like nice. having fun. You can find me on Instagram. Uh, you can also find me on Behance as well. Uh, I primarily focus on TikTok, which is one of my favorite places where I get to teach some people about some fun stuff. And I'm very transparent about my process and want it to be, you know, as straightforward nice. as possible. And also I'm starting to get into, let's see here, get into the Twitch game. So mm. <laughs> not necessarily art, okay. sometimes art, but, um, you know, art games, uh, games and stuff like that. And just, you know, keeping up conversations okay. so oh man you're not so, you're not social media shy i love that man i can see you're, you're so active on all the accounts so i can see we're putting the uh jacob's uh, social media handles in the chat so please do definitely follow after this stream and catch up but um but for today man everyone's here for you dude what are you uh, what's what we working on for today's stream yeah so i think we're gonna pop over to illustrator today and we are going to be working on some box logo design work uh nice. for some toys uh, I've always had a lot of interest in like the um, figures and toys and blind boxes, especially like, you know, Japanese blind boxes. And, you know, you mm -hmm. have all these like toys and models and figures. And I don't know, I've just I've wanted to do something like that. I've always envisioned myself making a toy. I think every artist has kind of a, you know, yeah. general desire to want to be make a toy of their drawing. That'd be right? a solid, so, solid like career path, wouldn't it? Just to kind of go yeah. into that space of like... Oh, it'd yeah. be awesome. And I think we're doing Halloween themed ones. So nice. I mean, yeah. I feel like it's only a few days out, but we're still within that hemisphere of, of still celebrating mm -hmm. it. So um, we're good for I mean, I feel like if anyone is working in the toy industry in the chat, definitely. Uh, <laughs> that's so niche. I love that. But please do. Please do let us know your comments. And um, yeah, Matt, so you're working in today for Illustrator primarily, is it? Yep, Illustrator today. Uh, I think yep. we're going to mostly do line work. Uh, cool. And then depending on the time left over, we'll either move into some color or, um, you know, kind of talk about the general idea of the name for the, uh, I guess, design itself, because this is mm. going to be kind of like a fake product. Um, cool. So kind of getting the name, brand name down, uh, mm. the character design, and then like what the box will look like. Do you know what's funny? Whenever we do Adobe Live and we have like, it, it starts off usually just like a fake brand or a fake pro, like, you know, just for a client. And right. then usually, because everyone's loving it through the chats for the two days, we'll make it, you have to make it real, man, because everyone's uh, going to love your design. You're going to have to make this for, <laughs> for Christmas gifts, you know, coming up. We're going to have yeah. to make it into a tangible thing. Um, I can see in the chat as well, we've already got some, uh, whilst you're kind of, you know, designing and getting through, we've got uh, Becca who's asked, um, you know, so how did you get into this sort of freelance gig? You know. Um, oh, yeah. You know, um i mean it's it's a crazy story too should i go ahead and start designing you want to yeah please do yeah awesome. we can it's it's a skill in itself designing and, and talking at the same time but yeah we'll yeah <laughs> i have some sketches um down in here that i have imported uh typically i draw from sketches so it, it helps a little bit uh this is just like <laughs> you can see the crudeness of my uh actual sketching uh 
on i should say illustrator helps a little bit more but mm. to go back kind of double back on what you're saying of how i got started funny enough um i think a lot of people can relate they kind of got started in you know quarantine like when covid happened i think it was a good opportunity for a lot of people to kind of explore and see what i guess the world had to offer when you're not getting boggled down by work right mm, um, for sure. so uh with that i mean really it was one of those things where i was like i really i've always wanted to be able to draw like i've always wanted to design and do things for fun but um i really never felt like i had the opportunity or the strengths or the understandings of like being able to design and mm. actually make logo work and things like that so i just kind of jumped into it uh it started honestly with like um what do you call it uh clip art like i i kind of drew oh, from yeah. clip art and kind of used assets. Some of those days. <laughs> yeah. School days, man. Yeah. Clip exactly. Art. <laughs> yeah. Like I bought some like clip art from like uh, different like websites and was just like, okay, I can use these assets. Started nice. using them and um, throwing some stuff together. And then I started screen printing. Uh, and that's when I started posting my process on TikTok, right? Like I was like mm -hmm. a printing in the kitchen, like just figuring it out, not doing anything yeah. really like super honed in um and it was a lot of fun honestly like it, it helped me learn a lot it helped me figure yeah. out how i guess to create content yeah. and like yeah. the fun of drawing right um and that kind of developed into okay well if i'm if i'm doing this then maybe i can start like a clothing brand you know again everyone's mm. jumping off point right um, it's the early stages right i guess of just not knowing where it could go right that's that's the exactly kind of the fun part yeah. process Okay. Yeah, and it was a little bit um, difficult to kind of find a direction, but I really focused on like uh, social issues and trying to make them kind of mm. like kid friendly because I really loved the idea of like, you know, doing these like not necessarily dark messages, but these messages that were like more, I guess, hard to talk about in like mm. normal, normal day. Um, mm. Let me exit out of this real quick. Um, and like making it an actual design and like a, something somebody yeah. could wear. So like, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement was huge during COVID. I still is, but um, and there was a lot of uh, direction with indigenous people, especially in, um, you know, the United States. Mm. So uh, oh, just kind cool of, too, yeah, following in that realm and then posting on TikTok more and more starting to have more people reach out and say hey i would love for you to design something for me i think i got really lucky with the mm -hmm. amount of support i received and selling merch really helped to support myself to say hey you know i i can do this like this is something i can do and mm -hmm. kept drawing kept designing kept doing things and then eventually like just decided you know i i don't think i want to do this temporarily i think i want to do this Make full time fun. yeah mm -hmm. and i mean it really was just practice right like practice and perseverance and like i did this on my downtime you know what i mean this was not always a full that's the beauty yeah. that's the beauty of it though right when you you kind of um it's interesting because i mean for for you guys and you know the chat myself and jacob caught up a few days even before the chat and we, we vibe so well because you know we kind of both roughly went to freelancing ourselves right at the same time and it's interesting you mentioned about that period of where you know you're, you're doing it for the fun of it and then not knowing whether this actually could be a career and then eventually mm. you know the more you're doing you're like well actually you know i'm good at my craft you know good people skills you kind of make it into well basically you just make it work right you um, right opportunities kind of make it work so um yeah it's refreshing to kind of hear that experience and again anyone in the chat you know if, if you're kind of just starting out in freelance or you know you're curious about even maybe going into that space of freelance you know, any questions and i'm sure jacob would love to hear him so pl please do get this in the chat and um will kind of uh pick his brains while he's designing but um but what i can see right now you kind of got those little nice bumps I yeah saw you start off the circle right a clip the lips and then you right. kind of made them into the shapes Looking exactly good. yeah i i almost exclusively work with shapes and um lines like and mm. even then like in in some of my work now you can kind of tell that like it's not all gonna be like you know <laughs> totally aligned like i kind of like the mm. looseness of it because i mean mm. I, I think that kind of gives it some character personally but so usually I start with like a body general idea, mm. kind of getting a rough sketch down um, from my sketch to my illustrator sketch and yeah. then um, work out from there. But yeah, it's all shapes and lines. It's literally all of my work, too.
So. Your illustrations are fun. I remember when I first, when I knew I was hosting you, I did a bit of background check like, like we all do. And I remember thinking, dude, man, this, these illustrations are fun. They're just fun. I mean, that's I the key. Like, it. I feel like you have, you have fun with them. And I think that, I don't know. Do you ever sometimes when you see a design and you see their work, you think, okay, cool. It, it kind of marries up with their vibe as well, where right, you just right, know right. the energy's there. And um, yeah, man, I get that vibe that you, do you like cartoons as well? I don't know. I get that energy oh, I love that you them. might like. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's right, like that totally <laughs> my jam. Like love cartoons. Yeah. love um any any like illustrative like media like <laughs> i love um this game oh man i'm gonna get so judged i can feel it i love this game <laughs> called... no, just say space i promise say space. <laughs> <laughs> i love this game called magic the gathering and like there's a whole bunch of artists that have connected with that and like have a similar style to me and i think it's mm. really cool like seeing such a fantasy kind of crazy game and being able to like make that like kid friendly even though it's kind of like mm. crazy you know i don't know it's I like it's very that. fantasy di or like not dinosaurs um like dragons and demons yeah. and stuff like that so it's no, i dig that dude it's i mean dude you're in a good place to geek out about anything design or creative related this this is the space and even oh, for yeah. you guys in the chat you know especially if it's your first time maybe watching an adobe live uh, obviously welcome but this is the pace you know to, to learn to if you don't know you know I'm always a firm believer if you don't know the answer, um, you know, ask the question kind of thing, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, please feel free to, to do that. Um, I can see we've got a, a question here, actually, for you, Jacob, from, yeah. from Anika, who's asked, um, so does Jacob send uh, cold emails to potential clients? And if so, uh, does he have uh, any suggestions for beginners? So I guess kind of reaching out to, maybe even more so during the after pandemic as well, like, yeah. does that kind of change that process for you? Oh, yeah. I mean, honestly, I have sent more cold emails uh like through like you know to, to companies that are, like, were just a dream um yeah then i have like received emails in my entire life for sure <laughs> you know what i mean like yeah. i've shot my shot as hard as i can and like gotten denied plenty of times right like i think mm -hmm. that's kind of part of the process right like for kind sure. of figuring it out feeling out and putting your work out there is like mm -hmm. super important just because, you know, if you don't shoot your shot for these things, then nothing will ever come of it, right? You'll always be mm. in your own space. Um, so it's one of those things that it feels bad, but eventually, you know, I, I went through cold emails for a long time. And I think, um, try to think of any specific collaborations that I had that kind of turned out with cold emails i had a mm -hmm. an experience with a with an artist it was a a uh vocalist and he lived in um uh orange county california mm -hmm. and he um was like such a sweet guy helped me with tiktok a lot uh and i essentially asked him i was like hey can i design some merch for you and he had a patreon mm -hmm. going on at the moment and i mean he's a huge creator on tiktok now like I say huge, the grand scape, scheme of TikTok. You know, there's a, there's a <laughs> one very billion. <laughs> okay, yeah. Cool. So he's, but Sweet. he's a, you know, he's a family vlogger now and he's like super talented and he allowed nice. me to, you know, be able to design merch for his Patreon. And nice. that whole relationship started for me being like, this guy's funny. I want to see if cool. I can make merch for him. And now we're like very good friends and he lives close to me that. now. And he's helped me with, you know, figuring out my process of how I should price when it comes to cold emails mm. and what I should be charging and where I should put my work. Like, you know, those connections mm. are, in my opinion, priceless to any pride, if that makes sense. It's almost all, it's almost all, it's interesting hearing that because, um, I mean, two things really, I guess in a way that feels very organic as well, right? I mean, obviously right. you, you went out your way to, to find, of course, but then what happens as a result of it, you kind of never know, right? And right. I don't know, I always put it down to sometimes confidence as well, because especially with freelancing i always think within time the more the more clients you work with the more people you know you collaborate with the more you kind of know about yourself as well right in terms of right. how you feel comfortable and i don't know sometimes that takes people a lot longer to, to get it it's, it's a confidence thing because it's never easy just kind of putting your work out there and thinking oh crikey does it does it look good in comparison to other people and you almost have that imposter syndrome right which absolutely creeps in um how do you kind of deal with that in terms of like because we all get it right especially freelancers kind of starting out do you, do you mm. kind of find that you know, when you've done a piece of work, you're quite quick to want to get it out there and see how people view it, or are you more like, I want to refine it, get it to a good place, and then strategically, are you kind of what's your kind of process when it comes to like uploading and in in full transparency, I still go through a lot of imposter syndrome even now. Mm. Like I take a lot of 
you know, influence from people. And I'm, I look up to a lot of people and I, you know, when, when you're in those positions, you tend to compare yourself to people, which is never good, but I think it's realistic to, to mention. And even now, like I, I would consider myself much more grown than what I was say even three years ago, uh, two mm -hmm. years ago. Um, and even now I, you know, I question like my talents and my, my work and am I, am I putting out quality stuff? Right. Mm. And I think the most important thing personally, especially when it comes to imposter syndrome and uh, being afraid of putting yourself out there is mm. to kind of just do things for you. If that makes sense. I know that's yeah. very, very hard to do, but I had that. If you're making art for yourself, like so if somebody mm. is asking for you to do something and you're maybe not comfortable with it, maybe mm. declining it because it's just not what you're into, even mm. though it might be, you know, a good opportunity or, you know, X, Y, Z. I mean, so it's OK to say no, because mm. if you're drawing for yourself, it's very hard to disappoint yourself, you know, <laughs> when the only yeah. person that you're trying to impress is yourself because, you know, you're you're. This is your brain, you know. This is you all coming you, right? from you. Yeah, exactly. Mm, exactly. I had that. that. It's cool. I mean, one thing I, I realized when I was, you know, checking out your, you know, website and your, you know, social media was that the diverse ways of how you showcase your work. So, for example, I know you've mm. got a few animations with logos where you've done them in is it After Effects or Premiere Pro where you've, After you've Effects, dabbled in right. that. Yeah, that's cool uh, to see, man. It's something <laughs> yeah. that's very new to me, but yeah, I mean, okay. just experimenting and having fun, right? Like, I, I mm. think at the end of the day when it comes to my art and my the stuff i do like i do it for fun like i nice. i'm not doing it for money i'm not doing it for like attention or anything mm. like that i'm doing it because i i'm i'm passionate really about yeah exactly and i think it's it's fun like i think mm. drawing and designing can be fun it can be super stressful of course <laughs> as of anything mm. but it's i think just focusing on yourself making sure that you know you are reaching the goals that you've set for yourself not because of mm. other people but just because of these are your personal goals is um super important in this industry i would say or this field yeah i, I think you hit the i think no i think you hit the nail on the head there and uh, again for anyone in the chat especially if you're if you're kind of just starting out um we said if you're very new to this stream you know these are the kind of things that we do where we you know but you're seeing jacob's design process and we're kind of you know working illustrator but it's always nice to kind of know about the the person behind the work right and actually knowing the design process and you know we're bigger than just design itself it's more about you know how you operate and you know just basic life really in terms of how you operate but um it's cool to hear that um dude in terms of how you uh you work with it but in the moment now what were you working on now because i can see his legs are like yeah kind of tangled man it's like a <laughs> so, spaghetti spaghetti loop legs <laughs> like, yeah so i moved over from the ghost um i'm kind of okay. taking a little bit of break because i'm not super certain about this little bottom part i might change that up a little bit but it's going to take some yeah. you know process but right now i'm working on a little cauldron i thought a cauldron Ooh. would be really cute for like a okay. you know bubbling up witch type style yeah, um, in the Halloween theme, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it'd be great. And this is typically how I do uh, my legs is like I like to interlock them together. So like, obviously, this ghost doesn't have any legs. But you know, down here, like if I'm having them stand straight up, they kind of mm. blend in. And I kind of overlap over a lot of my drawings and kind of nice. use the uh, cut tool to cut them out, essentially. Nice. And um, you know, we have to definitely do. I feel like because the the nature of how you're operating and working, we're creating characters. We've got to maybe do a little poll. I oh think, yeah, for our chat later because, I mean, the polls always go down quite well in in the daily life hemisphere in the chat to kind of get everyone involved. But the fact that you're creating these characters so quickly as well, it's almost like, I don't know. I almost feel like I want to name each one. Like they're just yeah. kind of adorable in a sense to where just like cool characters, man. So um, yeah, perhaps we will do like a little poll when you're in a good place with the two characters. And we can uh, see what everyone's thinking in the chat. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think that'd be great. Naming would be great. I know, you know, mm. this is just the the baseline because we're still going to have to get around the whole like branding of it as well, too. Like the color scheme, the, you know, mm. the names of the actual um, company itself, too. So I think there's a lot of opportunity for some involvement mm. and some tips, too, because I am not the best when it comes to names. If you can't tell from my username <laughs> by Jacob Paris, because the things yeah. I make are by me. <laughs> that's the extent no of that man, yeah. yeah i love that and uh, to be fair i mean you hit the, again you mentioned a really good point because again that's the beauty of these streams where you know you're designing and we can always kind of throw in you know our opinions or even just 
you know, if you see things that you think, oh, maybe we could use that tool, you know, please do let us know in the chat. And, um, you know, we're educating ourselves, you know, you're hopefully being inspired by it. So, um, right. So, yeah, definitely get those uh, comments in there. It'd be good to see. Oh, yeah. I mean, and I love things like this too, like from the viewer's perspective, especially just because it's one of those things where it's like, I learned so many things that like I've been using adobe for however many years and then someone mm. says this one quick little shortcut and i'm like oh <laughs> little golden nice. nuggets yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the beauty man I've, i am um, i mean again it's probably you know not plugging it but it's definitely a thing where even when i'm you know just say doing other client work and i'm based in london so sometimes there's a time difference as well when it's the us right. one but i always tend to have sometimes adobe live in the background because I don't know, I kind of like to hear people talk and interact, especially when it's at like design, whilst I'm kind of really focused on my own kind of design work. Do you know what I mean? It's it gets in the head space. Cave next door. Yeah, exactly. Especially in like two in the morning when you when you really need yeah. some sort of um yeah, it's probably not healthy to work in that late, but you get what I mean. Sometimes you kinda <laughs> no, you kinda I mean, need like I'm not the only one here working. <laughs> yeah, it's it's one of those things too. I mean, I'm sure you've had many of nights where you're like, okay, 3 a.m. This is the perfect drawing time. <laughs> Uh, do, do you know what I feel like for me it was more university like in the early, really? early stages of like yeah I think in the early stages of you know like studying and then being a grad and junior like I could stay up until super late and design and my brain perhaps mm. getting old now but when I get to that <laughs> when I get to that 12 midnight dude I'm, I'm ready to, to conk out really I think. Are, are you are you a night owl how do you kind of operate what's your kind of flow in terms of oh your... man I'm the worst <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely the type of yeah. person that's like I try to get on a schedule, especially when it comes to like being back home um, mm. or like, you know, when I'm not traveling, I should say. But, mm. oh, man, I'm like, a yeah, we're up till 3 a.m. Perfect. Oh, you're that guy. OK, yeah. it's so <laughs> bad. And I'm not even really like a procrastinator either. It's just one of those things. It's like I'm feeling very inspired. And it just so happens to be the crack of dawn. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're married to the cause. I love that, man. Yeah, you just like the yeah. dedication, right? You, um, I can see in the chat already, people are already agreeing in terms of the uh, the late nights. I, I don't know. It's the witching. I hour. mean, it's a bit of a cliche. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a cliche. The witching hour. It's a bit of a cliche, but it's definitely a thing where you find like you might get inspired at just random times in the day. Mm. Um, we've got Aniku who said, yeah, don't worry, Kieran. I work until 2 a.m. And we got Isabel who's saying she's a bit of a night owl. I never sleep. So get your sleep though, people. That's also important. Make sure you uh, <laughs> you can sleep, get a good functioning uh, brain. And important. And <laughs> oh yeah. It's, it's crazy too. I feel like different people operate completely differently. Like I worked for some mm. people. Weird. I feel like I've lost my marquee tool. <laughs> I can't size oh. this up anymore. Huh? Nope. And you're on the I always go to sometimes the window and you she can check the um yeah. different kind of uh let's uh, see that? workspace sometimes where you can see the different settings. Interesting. Yeah, that's not one that I am familiar. I might have accidentally hit a wrong button. I'll work around it for now. <laughs> let's see. Anika, who's our lovely moderator, usually knows the the tools and trips. So any, any yeah. insight you could get, please do throw them in and um, throw us a lifeline, and we'll, we'll happily. <laughs> yeah, um, sometimes that happens every once in a while, where I'll have like mm. my sizing tool just disappear. Yeah. Um, I know the biggest issue I have sometimes, like personal issue, I should say, is I accidentally click Command H, and I'm like, oh, I I don't know why I don't see these, like, sizing <laughs> markers anymore, and I forget all the yeah, time because yeah. I'm just that's the type of person I am. But um, I know, think I am. Um, oh, sorry, go for it. Oh, I was just gonna say, um, I was getting we we're, we're on the topic of um, drawing late, right? If I'm not mistaken, yeah, yeah. right. By the way, Control Shift B, Becca just put that in there. Maybe that ooh. could be a ooh. If you do that. Let's see. There it is. Wow. Oh, awesome. Becca, you are amazing. amazing. Thank you, you so emoji much, Becca. Star. <laughs> emoji, emoji star. <laughs> saying That's awesome. Thank you very much. That's the beauty of the chat, right? Everyone jumps Love in it. and helps out. Sorry, yeah, go for it, dude. You, yeah, we were talking about the uh, the late nights and how we open. Oh, yeah. I, I had a, a person that I worked with for a long time. Um, they were a silent partner of my company, so unfortunately I cannot say them by name. But <laughs> they were um, very they were a very efficient artist and they made um album art for very large uh nice. artists or i should say creators mm. or singers singers like very very large um mm. and they would always do it night before three <laughs> like oh, it's crazy okay. but it's beautiful work right it never mm. looked rushed it was 
impressive. Like I need at least a couple of days. To, you know to what? Prepare. Those kind of those kind of folks remind me of the people who, which I always wanted to be, and my sister is actually like that, which is a little bit annoying. Where they don't revise for exams that much, and then on the mm. day, boom, it's just like it's I almost think that crazy. is a superpower, and it's like my brain. I have to just revise from months maybe even years just to Absolutely. kind of get a few right but um but yeah if are you that person in the chat let us know are you that person who yeah you kind of like a, you can kind of wing it and then it goes well um obviously don't jinx it now by saying it but yeah <laughs> <laughs> that could be a thing too but um but yeah do let us know in the chat if you yeah, how you operate yeah so you to... you went to university for for a while how long did you go for yeah so i mean i graduated nine years ago nine mm. years this year which is crazy um yeah in Win in a little town called winchester which is very oh. much in the keeping of harry potter and the harry halloween theme it's very much like a harry potter kind of town um like cathedral like and oh nice yeah, man that was many years ago studying graphic design so that's so cool that was the time how about yourself what, what was your education background like where did you, yeah. did you go to college uni or no <laughs> high school ah, okay. that's it high school yeah to completely nice. self-taught i didn't have really any classes That's in high cool. school uh nothing like that like resource wise like i had a great art teacher a super super supportive art teacher but mm. you know i went to school in the the like back alley south you know what i mean that's where i grew up it was like <laughs> down south so okay. i didn't really have too many like we didn't have funding or resources in terms of like our interest i should say maybe not funding it was a great school but mm. like interest was probably the right word um, for people to say, oh, we're going to get into graphic design. Uh, and mm. school just really wasn't for me in general. I think, um, you know, yeah. for, for some people, they may agree. For some people, they may not. It's just, it wasn't, it never clicked for me. It never really, mm. I wasn't a good test taker. I wasn't really super great at focusing. Um, and like, I didn't kind of have like a career minded plan when I first mm. left, which I think is interesting too, because, you know, you get kind of self-conscious about that stuff sometimes yeah, like where you I have people up. having expectations of what you're going to be like i was definitely like the mm. bad grades kid you know what i mean i was the kid that people were like oh yeah jacob got another bad grade and it mm. was it was a little tough in high school um but you found your niche though right i mean this is yeah this is your calling though in this space now which is I hope so. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I, it's it's refreshing to hear. I mean, it's everyone's got their own kind of different, you know, backstory and, and education. And it's interesting because, again, with the people who, you know, the lovely folks who kind of join the audience in the chat, mm -hmm. it ranges, right, in terms of people who perhaps are junior, senior creatives, or even just curious about design, but are not actually working in that space. And I always find that it's interesting those who went to, say, uni, but also those who... And I'm really more interested in this, but more who those who are self-taught or just kind mm -hmm. of do it on the back of because they're curious or or even watch tutorials like this now. And um, right, yeah, I think for me that that's another just another way of you know educating your brain, right? Of how right, you can do absolutely. it. Right, absolutely. Digesting it in. Yeah, I mean that a lot of my resources came from like Adobe, like YouTube channel videos and like you know live streams and it. I was definitely the type of person of like, how to use line tool, go back to the program, how to do the marketing, <laughs> yeah. go back to the program. Like it, it was, um, nice. it was interesting. It took a long time, but like, I don't mm. know if I would have traded it for anything. Right. Like I mm. having the unique experience of being able to learn myself means like, again, I couldn't be disappointed with my progress. I wasn't taking any grades. Yeah. I wasn't doing any like thing that was, not built for me i wasn't super pressured mm. i kind of just went at my own pace i think that's the key you made a good point like that's the key with the pressure right because mm -hmm. sometimes whether it's family in, in you know in, influencing you or just the fact that you think when you graduate okay what do i do next and there's that pressure of just the big world world but when you're doing stuff you know on the back of your own of course you know whether it's you you know watching tutorials it's there's less pressure, but in a sense where it's almost like you don't mind that pressure because you just you just, well, you just need to learn how to do it right you you're right. actually dying to kind of find out how you operate and how you kind of figure out and solve issues but um yeah i think that's quite cool to kind of know how, how you operate in that in that space man yeah um sure. definitely a ton of fun i can see in the chat as well so we've got becca who said um i'm convinced the behance streams are the best way to learn at graphic design so oh there we go i can't um i can't argue with that that's a, that's a good shout um and actually on that note that's a good time to kind of flag you know for sure if if it is very much your first time uh on adobe live you know please always stick around because 
even after our stream we have more many more streams after this and we also do creative challenges and just stuff basically to kind of keep your brain creatively afloat uh, but more importantly stuff to kind of help you you know learn about different tools because the adobe space is big there's different tools but you can you know do things one at a time and digest it in that way so um if you're new to this you are in the right place i promise you that so uh it's a massive massive welcome and again any comments you want to get into to jacob please do let us know if you just join us thinking what are we looking at right now because imagine <laughs> zoom in like scary this is yeah. nuts. <laughs> in that theme of halloween but um just a flag so yeah today we have a uh, graphic designer illustrator jacob paris from philadelphia and he's creating a halloween uh, inspired packaging for a toy company and right now we're in illustrator so uh so welcome if you have just joined us oh yeah i think it's so interesting seeing like halloween based designs too because i feel like especially this year with like inktober mm -hmm. right like everyone took it <laughs> yeah. so differently and it's so cool seeing how like inspired mm. some people get for sure man i am um, got a lovely comment from d in the chat who just said you can't fail when you go to bahant slash youtube university um, oh yeah I feel like you can probably get a degree you can probably get a degree online just by just watching and just yeah That's you make so it you good. make it work i love, love that. that um <laughs> He was coming. Um, I'm quite curious to ask. So, in terms of how you're working now, are you do you work with a tablet or are you using mouse? What's your kind of setup at home? Uh, as a free I am super bare bones, honestly. I'm just using the uh, trackpad on the uh, MacBook. It's cool. it's one of those things. It's like it's always worked for me. It seems the most straightforward. I worked with a tablet before. Um, I've used uh, the Microsoft OneNote. That was great use the iPad. That was great. Um, nice. at least for vectored art, I just work a little bit better being more hands-on. I get a little, mm. I don't know if overwhelmed is the right word, but I get a little like just conjumbled. <laughs> if that's There's a, a lot, right? <laughs> no, yeah, no. When it, when it's it a now. It's cool. Like, <laughs> yeah. 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 When yeah, it comes to sure. like, uh, touch screens and stuff, I don't know. It just, it, it's not really like my, mm. thing, I guess if that makes I sense. I hate you. So, no, I hear that. Yeah. There's a lot to, that's the thing like I, I it's funny because i i kind of mentioned this story um quite a bit i feel like an old grandpa when he kind of tells you stuff all over and again but um i remember when i was kind of starting out and not knowing about the tablet and watching other people like especially when i was in like an agency seeing how they designed the tablets and mm -hmm. just thinking ah oh, that was super cool but my head just could never get around it yeah. i don't think so, i would never be able to not never be able to but i just don't see myself operating one and now dude i can't not use one now it's almost it's like crazy, ingrained right? in the brain yeah it's Mental. like it's one of those things it's like you don't know how good it is until you actually get a hold of it and like mm. start working on it too and that actually kind of like is a a general segue that like one of my biggest things when it comes to graphic design and stuff is like accessibility mm. uh that was always super 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 important to me because you know I know a lot of people that like either couldn't afford iPads or just couldn't figure things out and like, you know, had a little bit of trouble. Like, you know, not everyone can just straight up go out and buy a, a MacBook. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, no, I hear you. You got to grind sometimes, right? It's, it's a yeah. tricky one. Yeah. Mm. And I think it's cool that there's so many programs out there now that are just like, here, mm. have all of this for free right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> And even the trials as well. I, I always find oh, that there's, yeah. a, there's a few trials which that will be, you know, your best friend, especially when you're just kind of starting out, right? I remember mm -hmm. university, you get um, the beauty of getting sometimes going to uni is that you get a lot of uh, equipment and tools that are at your disposal through the uni as well. I remember mm -hmm. thinking things like screen printing. Have you ever done screen printing before? Oh, like, yeah, that's what I started doing. Yeah. Oh, sweet, man. Yeah. yeah. Do you ever have, do you ever have like your own? Because I know they're ridiculously expensive but you never have one yourself like yeah so i, I had a oh man i have a whole story to go with with screen uh, <laughs> yeah. you can hit us with that man we can hit us with that we've got a yeah. few questions in the chat but i'll strategically put them out there whilst you tell your story so yeah yeah of it. course so essentially when it came to like what i started with like i said i started with screen printing specifically that mm. was like my main gig and i sold merch and that was like all i did all i did uh, just drew and sold merch um but I did that on the side and I was working for a company, like a tech company for a while. Uh, so it, it, you know, it took up a lot of time. Uh, and eventually I was just like, you know, like, and I should, I should mention, I was printing with like the speed ball. They have like this like frame that you can like screw into something like okay. physically screw into it. And it's yeah. very low brow. Like, I was probably only able to print maybe 20 shirts an hour 
just because it was so okay. like low key, uh, if that makes sense. Mm, um, mm. And yeah, I didn't have like general equipment, but that's, you know, was kind of what my whole TikTok and Instagram was based around was like, here's how you do this thing without all this stuff because you actually don't need it and don't let people tell you that you need it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> that, that kind of evolved into uh, doing it so much that I ended up score, scoring a um, job at a screen printing, like not factory, but like a screen mm. printing like studio. And we had a really good gig going on too, where they essentially were like, hey, you can work here. We'll pay you X amount of money. And in return, we'll let you use all of the stuff, nice. all of it for free. So I'm using a yeah. $500,000, you know, nice. screen printing 12 head machine for free. And it's crazy, 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 crazy yeah. how different productivity can make. But it ended for up sure. not working out. I couldn't really focus on myself. So like, or mm. I should say like on drawing and because I was working pretty hard there. So mm. I ended up um, going back to the more design process of things. But yeah, I was deep 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 into screen printing for a couple nice. years honestly that's that's the beauty sometimes where it's just like i don't know sometimes i and you sometimes you, i don't know if you find this as a freelancer sometimes but you the, the days the days go so obviously so quick and you're kind of setting your ways in terms of how you operate and it's when you get those chance to maybe do things you don't necessarily always do like whether it's video work or or even screen printing mm -hmm. sometimes it's almost nice to it's almost like a bit of a detox from like doing the norm right which I don't know, man. Even talking about screen printing now makes me think on the weekend I might even try and find a screen print oh, somewhere yeah. in London town and, and get I'm on sure board. Yeah. yeah, I mean, having that like that breakaway to especially mm. to view art differently, right? Like, because I mean, sure. at the end of the day, like artists work super, super hard, like mm. super hard. But you're taking something that like for some people is a hobby and what some people is like fun. Mm. And like you're 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 putting in work. So sometimes it can be really like um sure what's the word I'm looking for? It can, it can burn you out, you know? Cause you're like, mm -hmm. Oh, this thing that's like creative is like now my, mm -hmm. my livelihood. So I think finding ways to reimagine art and reimagine like mm -hmm. designing and stuff can really, really help for like just your mental well being, you know? That's a very good point, man. I think, um, and to be fair, it's just even how you digest, you know, inspiration as well. I think mm -hmm. whenever we have these, you know, these streams, we always, um, and be great to know in the chat, you know, where do you guys kind of get your, you know, your forms of inspiration from whether it's for a client or whether it's a, a you know side project um because i think that's that's always quite an interesting point where i feel like now you know we're out of lockdown a bit and it's a bit more free in the world we can kind mm -hmm. of go to we can go to events now we can rather than just taking inspiration just solely from the screen we can go to events we can go to galleries jimmy you, know, you can just go see friends it, there's other forms of now you can um, do it but um again in the chat let us know where you get inspiration from and jacob i'd love to know from you man where do you get your um when you've been given a project thinking i need some inspiration what's your go-to besides adobe live obviously yeah, you're gonna, yeah. you gotta mention that oh yeah <laughs> where, of course. where else do you get your inspiration from uh funny enough i mean we we mentioned cartoons very briefly but like cartoons man mm. like i i just love cartoons i love like illustrative design with cartoons and like i take a lot of influence from um like stuff that i watched as a kid mm. um so like there is a show funny enough that i used to watch all the time even outside of school it was more of like a school thing but it was called mm. schoolhouse rock it's like an uh you showed me this i remember on our chat yeah right? <laughs> yeah yeah and it's yeah, oh yeah. man it's a blast like that was a huge influence for me i mean there's artists in the artist space that like um i i think that are just you know huge inspirations to me on how they work and what they've mm. taught me i mean i uh, books, honestly, I, I'm very grateful that I live 20 minutes from. Uh, have you ever seen Rocky by chance? Like Rocky Balboa the, boxing? Oh, dude, that's one of my favorite films, man. Really? <laughs> that's one, so, of my, one of my favorite films. <laughs> you know, the Rocky Steps. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So the Rocky Iconic. Steps lead up to the Philadelphia Art Museum, and mm. that's 15 mm. minutes from my house. So it's like. Really? Yeah. Ah, so, like, cool. we have the Philadelphia Art Museum where you can go every Thursday and you can pay what you want. Yeah. And I can just go and look at art and get that inspiration, right? Like, that's wicked. That, I mean, and you, you hit the nail on the head when you're talking about like inspiration in person because I feel like mm. that, like nature and things and like other people's work, like in terms of mm. like design work and illustrations and cartoons, like going out and seeing that in person is just so, so helpful. So important. Yeah. I remember even even going to like a bit out there and a bit crazy and it obviously depends on what you're working on in particular but going to the supermarket 
Oh, I don't yeah. know, like going to malls, like I always find like, whether it's branding on clothing or mm-hmm. packaging in supermarkets, I- I'm just obsessed by it. Like it's weird. Mm-hmm. Like I-, I go to a supermarket and it's a really bad habit I've got and my wife will kill me for it. But I go to the supermarket <laughs> and before I even buy anything, I'm just staring like I'm just lost in the headlights because I'm just looking at loads of different things. And then, I mean, that's like an hour later and then eventually I buy an orange. But still, <laughs> it's still cool to like, do you know what I mean? Like just to kind of get inspiration from other forms of ways um i can't be the only one who finds inspiration supermarket let me know if anyone else out there (laughs) i mean and um yeah (laughs) it's funny because like you know one of the one of the places i love to look at packaging the most same thing is like i get in a little bit of trouble with my partner is uh (laughs) whole Whole foods like has Ah. some of the most like modern packaging from what Mm. i've seen like at least that i can think of off the top of my head outside of like Mm. co-ops and whatnot but like more of a mainstream like it's it's mm. crazy, like some of the things they have in there. I'm just like, so man, Mr. Y'all Jacob, you're, you're a Whole Foods man, Mr. Jacob. You can tell a lot about where <laughs> person goes. To, see, I, just, oh. I strategically didn't say the name of the shop I went to, just so oh, no. it sends out a message to. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. No, I understand. Just, <laughs> we love a Whole Foods. I don't Foods shop there, at so. Whole Foods. <laughs> I buy ice cream. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> they do good products there. Um, yeah, yeah. I've got to ask. I mean, I, yeah. going back to that Rocky without going way off piece, and I did sure, sure. but have you ever done the whole run up the stairs? Of thing. course, of oh, course. Oh man, that's awesome. How Jealous. can you not? Like living in <laughs> Philly, right? Like it was before I yeah. lived there. It's funny too, because like the gig I had set up before I um, lived in Philadelphia, like my whole process mm. of moving up there and like my reasoning is uh, even before I was doing art, I was in a band. <laughs> and, really? Yeah, so I play uh, music. Cool. Like I still play nice. music and I, I tour with a band as well. And okay. um, that's I mean, cool, that man. was like my main focus for a long time long 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 time so i'd fly up to philly like all all the time like i say fly i definitely took the bus i was not somebody that had (laughs) that was a bit different (laughs) yeah when i say fly i mean get up there fast (laughs) limousine i mean bicycle there we go (laughs) yeah big difference but um yeah we would i we would go up there all the time and like we'd play and it was a ton of fun and i remember Mm. going up there for the first time and just seeing it and like kind of the similar uh mind of like how you were talking with um where you went to university like it just feels like such a historic town it's so mm. beautiful and it's just okay. like one of those things that you can't really yeah. replace i guess you know it's it's awesome i love it i fell in love with it's it it's on my um it's on my you know place to or well, places to to visit for sure and uh, again oh, yeah. i mean on that topic of even places that in the chat i mean i'd love to know where is everyone kind of you know yeah. tuning in from because that's the beauty, right? We've got streams all different types of the day. It's nighttime over here. It's daytime where you are, mm-hmm. now, right? And yeah, is, it is. is it your Yeah, that's the beauty, man, of just the of the streams. Let, let us know in the chat where you are uh, <laughs> where you're zooming in from. Uh we could love to hear it. Love to hear it. So what are we um those guys are the shifty eyes. That that ghost oh, looks yeah. like up to no good. I don't oh, know. Oh yeah. He is, he is yeah. suspicious for sure. What has he seen? I don't know, but <laughs> looks like it's <laughs> looks like it's fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm starting to like how these are turning out now. They feel like they're coming together yeah. a little more. I might move these lines around a little bit just because they're not really. I know I was like, oh, yeah, I don't care about centering. And here I am being super <laughs> specific about this. You're that guy. <laughs> yeah. But you funny. know what? I think we definitely have to do like a little, like we said at the beginning of the stream, like a little poll. Perhaps yeah. with those three. If you, again, whenever you're in a good place, we'll get those three characters up. And um, yeah, I always like to say when we're doing sort of character designs or, or illustrations of some sort, out of the three illustrations you guys can see on the screen for the chat, you know, which one would you maybe envision to have on a t-shirt? What would you want to have on a t-shirt? And that's oh, kind of yeah. a nice way to kind of do as a poll. But we'll do that in a minute when you're in a, when you're in a good place and we can do like a nice little... Uh, yeah, nice I'll polish these up a little bit more so they're at least fair. You know, they have a fair... Yeah, fair. <laughs> you give them love to just one and it's like... Forget oh, yeah, it's like, exactly. Yeah, we've yeah, all no, got favorites. <laughs> it's, uh, and also with a, um, what do you call it? With a name as well, like uh, for the company mm. would be great kind of start brainstorming yes. for that let's see what's going on actually when, you, when we do names as well that's quite because like, again in the chat we can always kind of people confer in um you know ideas of what names they they might think of as well mm-hmm. um it makes the brainstorming even even more swifter because you've got loads of people right. you've got a whole channel at your disposal jacob for when it comes true. to true, true, names true. so you gotta you gotta utilize it um on that topic of the schoolhouse rock going back yeah. before your inspiration we've got um zadak who um who said oh schoolhouse rock the og so oh, I think people yeah. are already loving. They know, man. They I didn't know until today. Well, until when we had our chat. But I'll do some uh, YouTubing later and uh, 
have a little check man i love schoolhouse rock that was definitely like the back back in the old day old day type stuff (laughs) before the war (laughs) yeah before the war the flashbacks (laughs) (laughs) no for me i'm to be fair i mean i'm into um it's funny because before graphic design i was doing Mm -hmm. video game design um, really? No yeah, I did, I did it for a, Yeah, I did it for a year and my brain was just obsessed with, I mean, still kind of am to an extent, like gaming and, and watching cartoons. And I, I, yeah. I'm i that guy that goes to cinema a lot, like just to kind of, Same. you know, I want to say inspiration. It's just because I just really enjoy it. But sometimes I can feed Same. into, you know, inspiration. But um, Absolutely. But, um, That's crazy. What did you like have any big inspirations for like video games or like do you have a favorite video game? Like genre, Ooh, man. Like how long? I mean, we've got like an hour and a bit left of the stream. I mean, we only need like an extra two more hours to go through. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, do you know what? I'm. I. It's funny because I had a chat with my friend recently. Actually, I mean, I'm that kind of guy. I like FIFA and Call of Duty and, and those kind of games. Um, mm-hmm. But also, I was obsessed with. I don't know if they even still make it anymore. But do you remember Portal? Yeah, was of on, course they do yeah. still make it. I think they just they still make it. it. Yeah. Oh, it was wicked, man. Um, yeah. yeah, that was awesome back in the day, man. Man, um, puzzle games. And I liked it because, yeah, it just didn't, yeah, exactly. Didn't, there was no real, but well, there was no violence. There was no even, even main characters. It's just strategic, right? Right. Of how you operate, which my brain, it appreciated those kind of games. Um, how about you? Are you, what kind of stuff are you into? Oh, man, that's, that? uh, I mean, my like all time, like guilty pleasure, and I'm sure <laughs> yeah. some people may relate, is like, I am a, like I love the Soul series, so I love Dark Souls. I love Elden Ring. That's like my absolute okay. like bread and butter. Like, okay. oh man, when I when I came to visit my partner, it's so funny because we bought a PS5 together. Very thankful that we got that opportunity. <laughs> That's romantic. I love that man. Yeah. <laughs> that is relationship goals. I do love. Oh that. <laughs> yeah, it was it was great. Also, I think I'm gonna just for, uh, you know posterity's sake i definitely think i'm gonna make some edits to this pumpkin i think i'm gonna i think i'm gonna yeah change okay. it up a little bit yeah looking at it i don't know i don't Switching know it feels feels like it could have more but um yeah so we bought a ps5 we got very lucky we bought it in canada so it was very cheap um and we bought elden ring for the second time <laughs> and i was like okay yeah. this is this is my chance i need to <laughs> platinum this game i have to platinum this game if yeah. i don't it's gonna drive me insane <laughs> so i, I attempted to platinum the game and i yeah. ended up having to beat it three times and like <laughs> loved it i mean yeah. so i love soul series i love pokemon it's one of my favorites uh, man, um man that was it that was the, oh yeah that was the og man if we're gonna go back we're gonna go well even now but yeah yeah the i mean that yeah. the new one's coming out in like 16 days Oh, okay. yeah. uh, for, do you know what's funny for anyone in the chat who are perhaps even not even not really into games but thinking this is a lot about gaming do you know what yeah. sometimes i feel it's a full-time job it probably is being a designer but also finding that time to do the gaming right because oh yeah just, just another outlet because that is so important to be able to do another outlet and of some sort but um but yeah for any gamer lovers in the chat you know let us know what is your vibe um i can see already we've got d's loving um they love portal 2 and becca he said oh yes love dark souls so um, yeah, yeah that's awesome people are people are feeling the vibe so um oh that's amazing yeah. i love that definitely sure. definitely super cool to be in that industry though at least for a little bit mm. like because i mean i it's it's hard work you know like it's intense it's crazy. studying as well it's um i've got a few friends who kind of they continued when i left so i left after the first year to do graphic design mm-hmm. um but they continued and got the degrees and um yeah man it's working on amazing stuff but i think it's more like anything i guess any any you know thing that you study you got to really want to make it your thing in order to to, to stick it for three years right because I mean, that's right. what you're doing uni for three years but for me it wasn't i love it but not enough to make it my career if that made sense that's more totally like a, fair a downtime thing um, yeah i mean and i think knowing yeah. that separation is so important right like being mm. able to distinguish like you know this is something that like i don't know if i necessarily want to make money from Mm, mm. right i think it's hard to know sometimes for sure for sure is this um we're looking at that's a i love the size of his shoes it's just like oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> switching up the I'm switching up it. the feet a little bit i kind of wanted it to yeah. be a little bit more of a dynamic pose when i initially went into yeah. this project i should say i i had the i the vision of like thinking of these guys like standing up right like if mm. they were physical objects designing the actual space around the idea of them being able to physically stand 
but mm. I was, you know, the more I was looking at it and like the more it, I was breaking down the design and actually getting into it fundamentally. I was like, ah, I think I would still prefer for it to have a bit more of a dynamic pose. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, Sometimes. I feel like that, that could be the selling, that could be the, the selling point for anyone who's going to do a little vote. Um, I can see in the chat. So Umicorn just said, again, what are we voting for? So perhaps you might have done it a bit too soon, but we're in, we're going to do a little vote in a minute and we might actually have one already actually from, from the poll, but oh yeah, when we finish refining the, the lovely characters, um, we're going to do like maybe a little vote on which one you guys are thinking. And actually, I can see Anika's kindly put it in the chat already. Um, but I have a feeling, I'm just putting it out there, that, and my favorite is perhaps the punky one, because already yeah. we've put a lot of time on time. And yeah, I'm liking the, the perspective of the feet. So that's not me influencing the chat, by the way. Not <laughs> at all. I'm not that guy. It's not political. But yeah, um, we'll, we we'll do like see. a little vote. <laughs> yeah, that's, <We'll> see. <laughs> that's so funny. I mean, yeah. And what's good too is with this vote too, because I mean, there's obviously going to be need to be a main character on the box right like the one that's going to be on the front so maybe it can kind of yes gauge to that effect of like okay this is what we're focusing on right like nice. for the blind box not so blind box <laughs> all nice, right nice. i think i think i like blend. that better yeah so nice, i'll just pop this good. down recolor a bit I always the line work is like the least stressful for me i feel like it's very soothing mm. how, how about for you what do you think do you know what I used in terms of like working with lines? You mean and with illustrations? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I? What you're doing now, where you you scanned in your your sketchbook and then you draw over it? I did that a lot during uni. Um, really? So like, I mean, I, so I mean, I work mainly with editorial now, so it's a little bit different, and I'm in edit in design a bit more. But right. I used to draw, especially in first year of uni, like so many like characters and just um. I used to do um like I guess vector images, but of like myself and my friends. So like I would I would get photographs and then kind of just like draw over it with the outlines That's that you're doing so now cool. and that was fun man to do because it's live tracing right it's just tracing mm -hmm. but yeah when I, you start absolutely. to see it kind of and you layer it and you add the colors and the tints and the shades it's fun to see man um, yeah yeah definitely so okay i think we're at a good yeah. point yeah i think i like right. how this pumpkin looks a little bit more now it feels a little more dynamic Oh, should we do like a that? i'm wondering in terms of how we vote um we might have to maybe do a little on the cheeky vote again should we do it by names if we name each character so yeah we know, um do you want to do the courtesy of maybe naming your oh man i mean the pressure now. i've given you a lot of sorry dude yeah. i was just like <laughs> can't have a name in three seconds and then we have to do it oh, um, like floaty that's a terrible name yeah, oh that's a, no that's a good name i like floaty that. Here, we'll, okay. uh, yeah, we'll, I'll put some text above it too. Yeah, and so then we'll we can have... put it in the chat and we can see which one. Yeah, uh... that's hilarious. Floaty's really Floaty, good. That's terrible. Let's see. I, I mean, perhaps the second one, anyone's feeling any names for the second person. I like I Gordy Floaty, so yeah. for the pumpkin. Gordy? Yeah. <laughs> Is that a method part? It's just like, it, just, it looks like a Gordy, right? Is that that, the... Just add E, er, a Y at the end of everything, it'll work out, you know? Yeah, that's a good show. Yeah, add wise at the end of it, some consistency across the names. <laughs> you got a floaty, gaudy, and a middle one. Yeah. Um, I, ooh, I'm not sure. I'm stuck on that one, actually. Yeah. I, I have a know. I have a dumb one. How do you Go spell on, gourd? Me. Wow. I You can tell I wasn't Ooh. that good at school. No, no, no I, I, I see gourd like that. I see <laughs> yeah. that Flash Gordon. Yeah, like Gordon. Yeah, yeah, that's what I would think too, right? <laughs> you go to Flash, Gordian, I go to um... Jeff Gordon. because the Yeah. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> nice. And then for the middle guy, what what should we name him? I was thinking, sure. if we're sticking with the E name, you know, a bubbly mm. cauldron, we could call him Bubbly or something like that. Bubbly, there we Maybe. go. Yeah, Hit the nail on the head. All so, right. lovely people in the chat. We have um, <laughs> choose your best <laughs> now. Uh, we have Floaty, Bubbly, and Gordy. So, um, the wonderful Nika could perhaps do a little pot. I think maybe the poll's there already. Um, and which one are you guys thinking and feeling in terms of what would you like to see on a T-shirt? Um, I'd love to say that we're going to get them nicely printed for you and sent out, <laughs> but that will be a lot for us. So, but in this case, just for fun. So, um, so yeah, Absolutely. please let us know in the chat or on the poll, what are you guys feeling? Um, whilst it's coming in, Jacob, I'll, um, um, I'll float that, in, float, that in, float that into you. I, my brain's <laughs> thinking floaty. No, <laughs> Again, insp fine. inspiring the chat to who they should pick. Um, yeah, that's, that's coming in thick and fast. So we'll let people um, have time to, to do it. What are you going towards anyway? What's your... You said Gordy was your favorite, no? You yeah, favorite? I think Gordy is like definitely one of my favorites. I I am yeah. a little bit of a sucker for like a rotund character, so I do like <laughs> Bubbly a lot. Like it's yeah. just I don't know. I love the cute, like fat kind of like rotund yeah. like characters. Like I, love, 
<laughs> Rotund. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Especially with, like, you know, to dial back, like, any, like, character design, right? Like, because mm. that's something that I study a lot, too, in terms of, like, trying to figure out oh, nice. the correct way to design and pose sure. and name and get influence. Like, character mm. design, like, I always lean towards round <laughs> less yeah, cool sharp shapes just round i love it it's interesting and um, when i you know i mentioned to you obviously i was doing the the um game design for a course mm -hmm. for that first year it's funny because we did um animation life drawing and 3ds max and that life drawing was interesting because all about the how the, the, the body the movement of the body and like the postures and the shapes you get yeah i don't know i feel like that can still relate into the whole character you know game design and even character postures and, and absolutely poses um yeah man i think mean, that's quite quite cool um so we've got anik and by the way i feel sorry for anik because we put in so many polls in the chat i think it's actually me for for confusing everyone so now we've got a final poll and it looks as though um gordy is leading at the moment so nice there we go gordy looks like as a winner i always like to think if you push him over he's has he gonna get up but it's fine he's just forever standing he's forever <laughs> walking yeah in he, the direction maybe he, yeah he's he got frozen in place like han and carbonite <laughs> Nice. So, um, so yeah, I mean, so actually, I'd say we're about, well, we're already an hour into our stream. Um, yeah. and it's good. To, I mean, time has flown by, but yeah, if you have just joined us in, you know, in our Adobe Live, um, a massive, massive welcome. Um, and today we have uh, the very, very awesome graphic designer, illustrator, Jacob Paris on Adobe Live. Um, and we're creating uh, some Halloween inspired packaging for a toy company. We're using a few different programs, but today it's primarily Illustrator. So, um, so yeah, thank you. You just joined us. And again, any questions you want to ask, whether it's related to Floaty, Bubbly, Gordy, or Jacob, please do <laughs> let us know in the chat and then we'll, yeah. we'll share that. But um, yes, yeah, so what's next, buddy, in terms of the, um, the process? Uh, next, I think we're going to get into the actual process of designing the, the packaging of it, right? So nice. um, when I, the way I like to think of packaging is I kind of like to think of it as like a puzzle piece. And uh, the easiest way for me to envision something, right, is to think of that package fully unwrapped. So, mm. you know how you see all of those, like, how to make your own custom box type things on the internet. Like, I like to think of it in that uh, mm. in that process. It's not going to be that way when we import it into Photoshop and start using the assets of actually designing the, or I should say, wrapping the box that we're going to be wrapping with the design. But I like mm. to think of it that way. So, that's kind of why I started on this square canvas. Because cool. being on the square canvas, I can think of it as like, okay, this is the front. Okay, this is the size. Nice. Okay, this is the right. Okay, this is the top. So I um, gotcha. think that will probably be the next steps, really just kind of getting a name down, some fonts. Mm -hmm. um, over here, I have some thumbnail sketches of kind of like what I had in nice. mind in terms okay. of like logo work. Obviously, yeah. like logo, 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 logo. <laughs> but, <laughs> That's a strong name, man. I'm loving right. that. <laughs> just, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, kind of just getting the 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 typeface assets down um getting mm. the orientation and getting some of the sides uh yeah. which i think you know if we're focusing on a main character in the front that mm. will be where the vote will come in handy because you know we can focus on nice. that singular character so nice nice and you mentioned it's quite cool to um to, in fact before i go into it <laughs> we've got the lovely anika who's flagged in the chat and we always have to flag this because it, it happens to everyone and anika always champions us i love it always press yeah. save always oh, press save yeah the, yeah yeah, yeah. Ooh, we've got man we've even got a floppy disk from anika in the chat so that's that's how much we have to save it otherwise <laughs> no it's not ideal for anyone we can see all your lovely work go to waste so, um, i yeah, have so a works. terrible <laughs> habit of oh man <laughs> i have a terrible habit of not saving that's my like like okay guilty sin i should say mm. is i never say never 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 oh, it's, i've never heard i don't hear that bless for me bless i know i know it's so bad and it's like yeah. i'll have oh, it's so funny i joke about it on tiktok and on instagram all the time about like untitled 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 untitled, untitled like just across <laughs> untitled, one board. two three four just like yeah, <laughs> yeah it's so You're bad. that guy okay <laughs> yeah it's i'm just a very unorganized person it's yeah. you know but yes saving you got your Thank method you, you got your method here. you know i always like to say do you know what it's everyone has their way of working right and mm. who are we to to judge it and I, I always think to myself that because one thing i've always found about being unorganized is like layers mm -hmm. like how people operate with layers and i don't know i'm a little bit rigid when it comes to this perhaps from where i've worked at but my brain always thinks that 
if I was to send my design files to another client, or sorry, for, for client, but for it's like in-house or right, another right. design team, could they go for my file and think, what has this dude done? You know, like, are they worried? Mm -hmm. Because I wouldn't want that as a designer. So I try and I do live by color codes. I'm yeah, that yeah. guy. Do you, uh, do you, you a color code man? Or, no, that's cool. I'm no a, judgment. As you can see, group one, group two, group three. <laughs> okay. It's, I mean, uh, I typically, when, I, when I'm when i sending them off to, to people or the mm. clients, I definitely name them. I'm definitely sure, not sure. a color code person, unfortunately. Um, I... I try I, as I have gotten deeper into the design space and into mm. the designing brain, definitely become more organized. I think you have mm. to. I mean, because yeah. you would just get lost in that peace of mind, right? Yeah. <laughs> you just <laughs> for Zen space. Um, exactly. And I can see Anika, by all means, this is not your cue to leave. We, um, I'm glad you mentioned the save because it's so. I always think of like our moderators, like, you know, the paperclip you used to get in Word doc, mm -hmm. like the little mm -hmm. pop up when you forget something. That's why they're there for. For smooth transitions of our chat so um Literally yes perfect. you're very much welcome so thank you for the save right? yes thank you thank you um so yeah i mean you mentioned about the brainstorming right about the mm -hmm. but that could be quite maybe we could do a way of i don't know whenever you're in that space we can yeah. get the chat involved with some names and um i would love that who's uh who's winning for the uh the vote i think gordy gordy seems won? to be am i right in saying that anika let me let me know in the chat um and again if you have just joined you can see three lovely characters and if you just jumped in you're thinking what are these characters which <laughs> ones would you guys dig on a t-shirt please let us know and then you can say your name so um if you have just joined please throw in a, a bubbly or gordy or um yeah. floaty exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah i mean i think you know if we have a general idea of which character we're specifically focusing on. I think mm -hmm. in terms of brainstorming, in at least in my workflow, I think the next step mm -hmm. would probably be a um a name for the brand. Sure. Right. Sure. So um there's some that I've been floating around. I only have one off the top a of my head. But gig. I would yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> I would love Sorry, to man. See, <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see like, you know, if anybody else had some ideas mm -hmm. if they had some thoughts like my Ooh. for context of what i was thinking i was thinking playground um okay. like as like the you know playful fun like sure. toy company right so mm -hmm. um but i don't know if anybody well, the plot the plot the plot thickens in the chat in the uh the competition now because it looks as mm -hmm. though i was thinking good but it looks as though unique just said <clears throat> floaties won by one vote wow, wow that is Guys, man, you're living life on the edge. This is That's, what nuts. <laughs> That's awesome. By one point. Wow. Uh, no love for bubbly, but yeah. Floaty, so it looks as though floaty is the way forward. Oh, man. So I think, you know, while <laughs> yeah. we're while we're kind of brainstorming, what I would like to do is, and this is probably going to be the weirdest part, but this is how I do it. I tend to work mm -hmm. in grayscale when I'm trying to really? figure out. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, and I think we, br I may have briefly mentioned it to you, but for me, the reason I work in grayscale, um, typically, especially if it's these bigger projects, if it's smaller mm -hmm. projects, I don't, cause I'm like rushing, getting through like to the, you know, colors and like just want to get it everything colored but if i'm mm. mocking up and designing from scratch and stuff like this i work in grayscale because i'm actually colorblind uh and i yes. use mm. exclusively hex codes to color mm. most of my work so if um which i think we could pop over to the um the colors tab right over and yeah, um, yeah for sure yeah was it, so, cool was it cooler you mentioned coolers you... yeah coolers nice. this is like my saving <laughs> grace um using mm. coolers and using like different types of um complementary color apps uh mm. coolers is something i've learned in the recent years i should say i used to just look up comp complementary hex color code and like type in my mm. color and just guess but you know having these letters and numbers and nice. is so much more helpful because you know i'm not i can see colors i should mm. preface it's just in terms of shading and in terms sure. of complementary uh it's it's a little more dull for me uh mm. and a lot of my art kind of focuses around those things right so yeah no but you made it i mean i remember at the beginning of the stream you mentioned a keyword like accessibility right and that's mm. kind of throughout anything <clears throat> excuse me wherever wherever space you're working in the creative space that needs to be the key so that everyone can appreciate whatever design so the fact that you're working in this space and um you know you mentioned obviously you're colorblind and you know the value of the hex codes and how important that is that's something we can all for sure for take you know take for a lesson and um oh yeah what were you using was it cooler because i think there's another cooler that i reuse as well like you got the i think it's the right one like k oh yeah this one's c-o-o-l-o-r-s this might not ah, even be the one that i'm okay. usually on yeah that's a different but, one 
Yeah. Really cool. But yeah, same sort of premise again. Where mm. We again through Adobe, we have Adobe Cooler. Um, and again, it just for anyone who's quite new to that, you know, it just allows you to kind of see color variants um, if you're starting out new. But also as well, you can see how different colors can kind of work and correlate together. Um, but also trends. That's quite cool. They do a lot of trends on here, which yeah, if you're starting out and you're doing packaging, this will be your best. Yeah, this is it. So this, this is what I was in. thinking of. I had the wrong one up. <laughs> I saw it. I was like, there's a different branding here. Yeah, I, yeah. My brain was a little bit, yeah. Yeah, because um, we have the monochromatic and complementary. This is what nice. I had in mind. Nice. Super useful. I love the, um, at the tab where you've got to explore and the trends. Like I'm always mm -hmm. just, even when I'm not even doing work with color, I just curious to see what the trends are. And again, it's kind of cool to see what's kind of current. Um, yeah, it's so useful. Yeah. And you can see them used in projects too, which is just like. Yes. So important. Night and day difference, especially with like things like this, right? Where you can actually see the whole breakdown. I love this, even though I can't really see them super well. I love yeah. this side of design just because mm. it's so satisfying. And even with like screen printing, right? I don't know if you've ever heard of CMYK screen printing. Yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 yeah so like mm. the, the concept of using four colors to make like mm. a thousand is just so insane to me. It's right? insane, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it's incredible. And I mean, I can see Anika's put the, the link in the chat. So definitely if you're quite new to that and you haven't seen this before, without a doubt, definitely explore it. Um, that's again, another gem from Adobe just to kind of make your lives a lot easier and even more streamlined when it comes to your, uh, your process um cool man so yeah we're working with some colors now into the packaging yeah so i think right now i'm going to start with that grayscale. i'm going to go ahead and um typically how i color my characters is i like to go like you know click on the character and use the expand yeah. tool and use the um nice. the uh wow i forgot the name of it the live paint bucket tool that's mm. what i was looking for and it's just quite satisfying just isn't it about doing yeah. that it's just great. Like satisfying. <laughs> it's the it's literally yeah. the best. So I'm just gonna go ahead and work and work out all these in grayscale, mm. expand them out, and kind of get a general idea. Mm. With this cauldron, I kind of want it. Whoops, I kind of want it to be more dark colored, kind of like a charcoal. I just realized he's, um, I love his mouth is like a heart shape, right? And oh yeah, <laughs> I just picked up on the little details of. I don't have anyone else on the chat, but it's cute. <laughs> You know, I yeah. feel bad now for not voting for. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's Wasn't okay. it bubbly? Yeah, <laughs> yeah bubbly. There we it's go. Cool. Might even want to go a little it, bit. It was the hat. Too. That's what threw me off. It, it oh, was yeah. <laughs> it was the hat. You, I think you need a snap back, maybe. I don't know. Um, yeah. But yeah, looking good, it man. Looks like I missed. Oh, yeah. I missed clicking on one of these guys. There we go. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I love the idea of halloween toys yeah. <laughs> it's just so fun like little figures seems like a, a fun idea i feel like i don't know if again it'd be great to know in the chat if you guys have this but like in my office next door i've got so many like little figurines by the desk like, i don't know i think a lot of designers tend to have mm -hmm. some sort of like models or bits and bobs right whether it's on the top of the desktop or on the sides let me know if, if you're if you're a model person if you have little <laughs> toys and in fact what toys do you have actually it'd be great to know you got to um, give it some character right you gotta you gotta give it some of course love. For sure, man. <laughs> that and um, without getting off piece on I Apollo, because I do, I've actually got, besides the models, also Rubik's Cubes. Oh, I've yeah. Got, I love Rubik's Cubes, man. Dude, I, um, I was deep yeah. into that when I was in high school. <laughs> deep, deep, deep into nice. that. Nice. You were man. a guy, man. That was we would have been friends fun. if we were in school together, man. I feel like oh, the, vibe no been, <laughs> the vibe would have been there. Yeah. No, yeah. It would have been a ton of fun, honestly. That'd be cool. So did you, was your first experience with, um, with like design and, um, all this was, you said it was in university. It wasn't in high school. Uh, yeah. So, well, secondary, so I guess secondary is our high school, uh, your high school is our secondary school. Right, so, right, right. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, it's, it's always a tricky one because at that age, um, so secondary school, we're thinking what we're talking, what age would you be like 14, maybe 15, I guess. Yeah. That sounds it's about tricky right. tricky because... If it wasn't graphic design, I actually wanted to be a um, Sam Random. I wanted to be a Kids TV presenter. Oh, um, that's kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of living the dream of hosting now, so that's kind yeah, of my yeah, yeah. my filtering, barring the the kids shows. Um, but yeah, that that was it mainly because I just love cartoons and also talk to people. Not so that. that's kind of what we're doing today, actually. You know, yeah, <laughs> okay. cartoons. So yeah, living the dream. There we go. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's awesome. See, um, in the chat we've got D. I have lots. At my desk, mainly Disney and Pixar. Nice. Oh, nice. What characters do you have from Disney Pixar? Let me let me let us know. I want to know. 
I'm a big um, Disney yeah. and Pixar fan. Again, going <laughs> back got, to the cartoons. That is for sure, man. We got um, uh, Seren Serenity. There we go. That's a lovely name. Uh, saying, okay, "Can I be your best friend?" I assume because she has the <laughs> the, the, the the models on the desk. So, um, That's awesome. awesome. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I mean, we. Oh man, my partner. She's an amazing person. She has gotten me so deep into models and figures and like mm. Gundams and all that stuff. Oh man, it's a, <laughs> it's a trip. It's a trip. Oh yeah, it's crazy. Um, so yeah, I definitely understand. Like my whole desk is just crowded at home. <laughs> mm. Well, you need again. You, we spoke on the idea of inspiration. You kind of need something just to I don't know, right? Take your eyes away from the screen. Something that's a bit cool to look at. Um, Absolutely. So yeah, it, it's good for the soul. It's good for the mind. Um, I was going to ask a question in terms of, and it's, it's related to, I guess, you know, your life as a freelancer as well and yeah. maybe working with clients because again, we touched on before, a lot of the people that come in the chat, it's ranging from, you know, students, graduates, senior creatives, people are just curious about design. <clears throat> when it comes to working on a project and like, you know, feedback and amends, how do you kind of digest that? Because that sometimes can be, especially if you're just starting out, a tricky one though, in terms of mm -hmm. how do you push back? Do you have a process of how you operate or you kind of find yourself you're still learning as you go along what's kind of your, your that's a really 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 good question honestly and it's funny enough too like relevant because i just had a similar question kind of pop up on my uh instagram i had somebody message me asking like how do you like what sort i'm looking for how do you in a polite way decline <laughs> someone's um mm. commission right and that was something that took me so long to like kind of understand is like again how was well, there a way to like turn down something am i turning down a good opportunity is this the right mm. thing for me um mm. and feedback right and receiving feedback and giving feedback especially too i think receiving feedback is one thing mm. giving is just as hard um but That's truthfully i mean Open communication, I think, is so, so, so important in this field, right? So important. Mm. And I think it it really can separate from understanding and being on the level with some people and not, mm. right? So um, I think That's a good point. really, at least when I talk to people and when, I, when I'm receiving feedback, I think mm. asking for clarification, not being afraid to ask for clarification, not being afraid to give feedback on maybe like, you know, understanding this specific thing that's being, um, I guess, conveyed to you. Mm. Uh, and also, you know, not necessarily being fully in your head about things. Like, don't take it as like a personal job, right? I think mm. understanding that it's, you know, at the end of the day, especially when it comes to art and business and design, it's business, right? It is a business. Sure. So. It's one of those things where good... people are trying to get the best out of the money that they spend. Mm. You made a really good point, especially, um, I don't know, I always felt like it, it's a bit of a learning curve, right? Because mm -hmm. it's 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 difficult not to take it to heart, but then also you kind of want to know that both yourself and the client or whoever you're working with want to get to the best deliverable possible. So, mm -hmm. you know, the idea of challenging a client, when I give talks, I always want to mention the idea of, of challenging a client because, you know, if you are free and some people have approached you it's because you have a skill set and that's exactly you know, they don't so it's kind of like the trust in the process and and being able to kind of you know design in a way where you feel comfortable and but also if something doesn't feel right not just to go along with it if you don't feel 100 percent there because you mentioned the idea of the, the keyword transparency i think from right. the get-go it's always key just to if you don't know ask right and don't pretend because i don't know about you but i've been guilty many times as a young junior and starting out where you feel like you can do it and you kind of maybe you know waffle it a little bit and you don't really know mm -hmm. what you're doing and you kind of get it wrong and it's like eh, if only i asked right yeah um yeah it happens to the best of us but um absolutely again, any um again any any experience you guys might have in the chat or, or anything that you found when it comes to you know feedback amends you know within your within your own craft let us know in the chat it's always nice to kind of hear everyone's experiences because um, it's always different too right always 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 different um, just as different as everyone's models on their desks, because I can see <laughs> Gareth who said Star Wars black and on his desk, he's got a Star Wars black series helmet 
and lightsabers Ooh. on display, but various types of Rubik's cubes and a mask can take banana coloring. Obvious, Gareth, how big is your desk? I imagine it's like a, <laughs> like the longest of your models that conveyor belt, just like <laughs> that is that's incredible. a cool desk, man. Oh, yeah, dude, no I, I need to see this desk. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, everyone's putting in the chat. Everyone, wants to, we started a trend now, but um, but yeah, I going back that. to the design anyway. In yeah, yeah, space, yeah. Like, what we so we're working with it with a name and a nice. yeah so i've got some like uh this is one of like my favorite typefaces um you know it's uh from a a type foundry i wish i could <laughs> reference it but um yeah this um <laughs> it's called uh dotty's vanilla uh and it's called uh, what, sorry? dotty's vanilla yeah so i, I love I, that name yeah and i figured it'd be like a good one to <laughs> kind of start with so i'm just dropping down some you know some sample kind of like directional text and getting nice. everything kind of sized out obviously we need to kind of come up with that name mm. um which i'm still a little stuck on i'm not entirely sure what what would be the best well perhaps we could um i mean on, in the keeping of um you know what this is about and the concept of you know being a halloween you know focused toy um i mean is there anything we could give in terms of because again we have the chat at our disposal and everyone wants to get involved yeah. I'm wondering what is anything we can give our lovely audience something they can kind of chew on so then they can think of ideas or of names um yeah while you're designing so that way we're in a good place maybe some you, like halloween or like keywords or something i don't know um that's a good question mm. i don't know i mean i don't, I don't know. ask that question i don't even know myself sorry <laughs> <laughs> this is no, curious, i mean yeah. yeah it's it's one of those things too like in this design process especially like in general it's mm. it it takes time right like takes yeah. kind of like some ideas i think going on the halloween theme could be great um mm. you know maybe some like halloween words like spooky or you know like okay uh, yeah. like Working on um, scare like something mm. like that like scare factory you know something like along those lines too like something mm. fun silly like you know there's a brand called toy machine and they have like the devil logo stuff like that right like maybe yeah keywords of like spooky scary trick-or-treat things like that right so that's it my um <clears throat> my friends so again that's that's everyone's task in the chat um get mm -hmm. you know get your creative juices flowing think of them um, so again we're trying to think of a name for the toy packaging um and we would love to you know hear what you guys think or even better what names you suggest so like jacob said you know it could be keywords like um ghostly or ghouly or trick-or-treat or anything related to halloween um for the packaging let us know do you know what i'm even thinking it's a little bit out there mm -hmm. but for any harry potter fans in the chat Oh um, yeah, and this is definitely a thing. Maybe even being from you know being in England, but also because <laughs> of our previous streams as well. Being you know having stuff related to Harry Potter, maybe some of the spells in there. If oh. anyone knows, because I feel like some of the spells are cool names, so maybe that could be. So again, if you're a Harry Potter fan in the chat and you know your stuff, or if you know any spells, please say in the chat because that could be quite a cool name. Maybe I'm I like saying, that. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. yeah. Just no, randomly. I like that a lot. Yeah, I, I think too, especially like once we get a little bit deeper into this and start getting some names down so we understand the links of the actual typefaces, I um, mm. think we could like work on some, you know, bleeding into the like outward space of the of nice. the box as well, too, which I think could be a lot of fun as well. Nice. So. And just think, a little uh, disclaimer, we're not going to use the names for like selling purposes, just so no, 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 <laughs> it doesn't no. go out, <laughs> just to flag that for anyone just joined in, like, you can't use Vengardium Leviosa as a, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, I'm just saying. Just Get hit a, with that hard just copyright for strike. That's <laughs> <laughs> funny, a cease and desist. That would be the name of the company, cease and desist. <laughs> I'll get that for my son. Right. Um, oh my so goodness. we've got a question from Anika. He said, um, so has Jacob designed packaging uh, for fun and printed uh, some mock-ups just as a passion project? Um, uh, <laughs> that's a good question. I have designed um, logo, or I should say like this type of like box design before. Never had the opportunity to print them. It is definitely a passion project. I've done some logo work and design work for um commissions commission based mm. work which has been really fun i'm really thankful mm. that i got those opportunities but never on like a large scale for myself it's definitely something that is like yeah. one of the not, main not yet anyway not yet right? yeah exactly it definitely would be so fun um and i mean i've i've seen so many videos and watched so many tutorials and tried mm. to understand it because it's just there's so much to it right there's so many mm. people out there that do package design for a mm. living. Like that's their gig, which is so crazy sure. to me. 
it's very very cool in, in terms of that you know working in that spell and working in that spell i said yeah. spell because i saw the um, i saw the chat and my brain uh, so yeah that's how my that's brain operates. funny I see a word in the, working in that world um i was gonna ask before i read some of the comments i can see coming sure. in now is um when it comes to obviously we're in illustrator now um do you find sometimes when you've got a project are you kind of working between say multiple programs at, at one time or do you kind of find that you're more comfortable in, in say illustrator and you kind of maybe work in that space and you, you get it done what's your is it kind of a learning curve or what's your vibe when it comes to that? It really all depends on the project. I think, um, you know, if I'm working on a project that is like, it involves a lot of mock-ups, so like t-shirts or, um, you know, box like design work or anything like that, I tend to bounce between Illustrator and Photoshop a lot, a lot. Nice. Um, when it comes to say, like portfolio building, I bounce mm. between illustrator and after effects a lot um but i mean the the main basis i would say the main guy is definitely illustrator that is like my That's bread and butter yeah 100 yeah. I, got, I got that vibe very early on and it's yeah. just like it makes sense man for the for the beautiful work that you, you create illustrator is your um that's your jam man which is i appreciate which is cool it mm. so now i'm just going to add a little bit of a background to this ghost because i kind of want to give it some depth or i should say a stroke to it because okay. i think it would look a little more interesting like a little bit of and a on the um, i was gonna say we've got obviously <clears throat> we're working on the ghost but above with obviously with the fonts yeah. um where do you kind of go to for your you know again a lot of obviously stuff online and um things as well we're in the adobe space of how we work with fonts but do you have a place that you go for fonts or Again, yeah, adobe I mean, lot, but... I would say Adobe Fonts is like the first choice for me personally. Mm. Uh, and that's just being genuine, right? Like, I, I really do enjoy <laughs> yeah. Adobe Fonts because like, I mean, you can look through my work and like some of my favorite fonts I use are like Chi and Hobo and like, um, mm. what do you call it? Uh, Champion Gothic, like all these things that like nice. are, you know, it's just like that's the space that i work in and that's what i enjoy mm. and i've always used and i use for a while i'm trying mm. to um man i wish i remembered off the top of my head there is some type foundries that i go to there's some free type foundries actually there are some great resources okay. that i go nice. to a lot and i think one of them is what is it it is um lost type.com lost type is uh, a great yeah, one yeah i know that one dude yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome love lost type <laughs> I love yeah. um, Graphic Burger. I don't know if you've heard of that Close, one. That yeah, one's pretty useful. And yeah, then yeah. Um, Unblast are like three of my like yes. go tos. If if Adobe doesn't have the main thing, when I'm typically I'm typically using mm. this stuff anyways, it's typically those. So those are like there we go, my friends. You have some gems straight from Jacob in terms <laughs> of his sources for fonts. So obviously Adobe Fonts has <clears throat> the world of fonts that you can definitely browse around. Um, but again, there's other ones as well. You could you could dive in and digest so um so yeah please uh have a little browse on that yeah. um yeah it's always cool to it's cool, cool to hear and i can see in the chat i mean izzy said that um yeah you know a lot of harry potter spells get them in the chat then so we can um we can share because again <laughs> that could be a name i don't know just saying you can make it your own um i feel like it's a brief isn't it? a lot of pressure now isn't it oh yeah work, but, you know yeah. but we, we like <laughs> in, a little... in a fun way yeah, we exactly. work good under pressure. So yeah, right now what I have is I just have like the um, general um, front face, right? So like when yeah. I think of designs, I think of, oh, for ages five and up, the sample explaining what's inside, the logo name. So like this is the big branding name, something yeah. underneath that says collect them all, you know, and then something down here and then something <laughs> wrapping yeah. around here, like exclusive colors or something, you know, we adding on to that idea. Obviously, I'm, mm. this is how I work, grayscale adding sample nice. and then I brainstorm because I love having the layout ready to mm. go and just mm. fit, fit it all. I like as well how you work in that. I mean, again, because some people have different processes, but you, when you work in, obviously you mentioned obviously being colorblind and it's a lot easier to work in this style, but mm -hmm. when you work with gray or black and white, you almost allows you to kind of have that foundation, you know, cemented and then adding the color is almost like the icing on the cake. Obviously color is very, mm -hmm. very important, but you kind of need it to work in those fundamental the black and the white, right? Exactly. Um, just as like a as a basis so um yeah that's kind of, kind of cool to sort of see how you operate and just it feels like you're kind of just getting things placed in where you want it to be and then it could change but for now that you get an idea of where things would sit yeah um, i mean and 
it, it's it's the way that I work, but you know, people can work in completely different ways. And that's kind of what I love about design in general is like, I could be doing this this way mm. and then, you know, someone else could be doing it completely different and that doesn't make it wrong or right. Right. That's just, for sure. that's how I do it too. So that's the beauty um, of it. That's and, the beauty of it. and that's what, oh, sorry, go for it, dude. Oh yeah. I was just going to say, I think what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to work on that side always when it comes to um blind boxes at least from my experience because i'm very deep in the blind box community <laughs> mm. i um you know you're gonna have like the actual spread of all the characters that you have so maybe you know those names can come in handy so now we know the names of the characters nice. and actually kind of you know space them out correctly nice nice um we've got a, a comment from anika so am i right in saying we're doing right now the panels the different panels of the box we are yeah okay so anika's ox and i'll be designing the back of the box so we're doing like the, the side panels and the back panels exactly um, and you can get a feel for it in in general um i can see we've got a lovely um a lot of people kind of just been joining in quite nice so we've got um got melanine um <clears throat> excuse me melanie steve uh who else alessandra so massive welcome nice. um if welcome you have in. just joined us um and yes, we have just served an update to if you're thinking what on earth is going on because we have <laughs> awesome characters and I want to know more. So you have just joined us. Um, so welcome. Um, and today we have graphic designer and illustrator Jacob Paris, uh, fresh from Philadelphia. Um, he's creating a Halloween inspired packaging for a toy company, um, working a bit of illustrator, a bit of Photoshop maybe tomorrow, but pro today is primarily in uh, illustrator. So um, so welcome if you have just joined us. and. Jacob, man, I mean, we've already got, I mean, time is going, it's crazy how quickly in the space. Yeah, but, it's um, flying by. But we're in a good place still. So, um, so yeah, I'll definitely give you a little heads up when it's sort of 10 minutes or so. And then, um, but for now, you do your thing, man. Yeah. I mean, I think what's going to be, you know, I as much as I love line work and as much as I love the design process, I think where it's going to be really fun is getting to do those, um, those uh, color color schemes, I should say tomorrow mm. i think it's gonna be a lot of fun nice it's cool when you like i guess i don't know mock-ups i find that as freelancers like mock-ups can be your friends right when it comes especially trying to set use the word sell but i guess it is part of it like trying to really convey how the design will be executed especially to clients right. when they, they almost need to see it in situ right um right it, it just it's kind of just makes it a little bit easier to kind of um sell it so um yeah, that's, you that's, that's get the, the fun idea. part as well yeah absolutely totally, i think man. like having I, I think the coolest part about stuff like this too personally is i just think it's so cool that you can kind of like make whatever you want you know what i mean like you like can just do like you can literally make yes. any product that you want and like see what that would look like and i think that's mm. just so cool to me i know as well actually it'd be crazy not to mention it there's been so obviously we had our amazing adobe max recently and you know, with a lot of mm -hmm. the, the content that came out and a lot of um, updates as well, you know, definitely keep up to date with that because things like mock-ups and how you work with different tools, it just makes it even more easier to kind of fly through your process. So always kind of keep up to date with that. Um, and again, we mentioned before, even when we're not on our own stream like now, there's plenty more streams that are going on that you guys can tune into and, and really sharpen your uh, design skills. So, um, so yeah. The wonderful gods at Adobe Live has blessed us with some really mm -hmm. cool tools. So definitely, definitely um, take advantage of it and have fun with it too. Absolutely. Absolutely. So right now I'm just kind of doing some consistency around the back, um, adding those strokes to the characters. One mm -hmm. thing that I feel like is a fatal flaw, but also, you know, just how I work is um, I tend to kind of go by eye for some stuff when it comes to very more okay. specific projects i should say i don't but um mm. you know i'm just more of a like work from how it looks type guy you know mm. no, i had that i had that. I, I feel like yeah it depends on the, on the duration of the project as well because mm -hmm. sometimes you know not trying to um uh say obviously it's good to, to rush not at all but sometimes you find that when you have a bit more time on your hands depending on the length of the projects you can really refine and it's all about kind of just getting things on the page first and just right. kind of knowing what once you're there how do you kind of work for it and refine it um, yeah more scary than a blank page I always find. <laughs> absolutely and i think what's important to understand too especially when it comes to this field too is you can put so much effort into a project and the person could just not vibe with it and that's mm. fine you know like this is if you're if you're doing a commission at the end of the day the design's for them so that's why i like to work in batches and i like to put in this this work and 
um, you know, use, use my resources as I can, because, you know, mm. the fact that I have this all laid out, if I need to, and they say, ah, I don't really like Gordy being on the right. I want him to be on the left. All I can do is just pull him over. You know what I mean? Something as simple as that. So it's like you stripped it when you, when you pulled him over. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gordy. He's like, where's my body gone? Like there was like yeah. a whole, this is his Gordy little background. Story. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, I was like Gordy's soul. I just literally oh, stripped yeah. out of him there. That was well, scary. it is Halloween theme. So, you know, it all makes True. sense. Yeah. In the, in the, yeah. If anything's going to be scary, it's going to be this, right? Oh so, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> It's the spooky live stream. <laughs> I love that. I love it. But you know, I love the, again, it's little details, but just the difference in your thickness of lines, how, I don't know, it just gives it more depth, no? In yeah. terms of the, the characters. It's subtle, but it still has that depth to it, which I love. Um, whether it's the shading on the ghost. Yeah, that's quite cool. There actually. we go. It's like stickers now, actually. Yeah, now we can get a little bit of a better idea. Darkening it up probably makes it a little more visible. I'm just going to smooth out because I have these little spikes over here. Mm. like this yeah so like this is kind of like the idea i have in mind because you know when you have on your blind box of course you're going to want to know what you get right what you are mm. going to get in the box um there's some you know little spots here and there that i want to fix like i definitely want these to be aligned because that's important i want this to be centered mm. well we'll do whoops gotta lock that background that's a habit i have <laughs> i have a lot of uh the problems locking. With too. <laughs> yeah not good so yeah that's centered Make sure yeah. these are centered with bubbly. So kind of just, you know, figuring out my space. And yeah. again, like even with things like this, right? Like the reason I like to go by, I guess, by sight is, you know, sometimes if you're drawing an image or I should say like a character and you're aligning based off of the artboard, sometimes it just doesn't look right. Like maybe this needs to scoot over a little bit. Yeah. Maybe it needs to go up a little bit. So, um, For sure. Maybe not the most efficient, but like, you know. <laughs> no, but sometimes by eye, it's, it's yeah, I mean, it, it depends on the projects as well, because, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously I'm very editorial kind of focused and it's tricky because you don't want to do things by eye when it comes to grids and stuff, because... No, no, no. <laughs> uh, for me, it's almost blasphemy doing that. But when it comes to maybe the characters and the fact that your style is quite, you mentioned at the beginning of the stream where it's... It's quite, you have obviously quite unique style, but it's not too perfect, you said. You don't mind right. if it's a little bit, which kind of plays in its favor, really, doesn't it, when it comes to that? Because you don't have to make sure it's completely perfect with, like, the shape. So, in a way, yeah. you kind of give yourself that 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 leeway to have a bit more of a jaggedy edge or, I think, too perfect. Making it a little more loose is kind of, like, what, you know, mm. helps, helps me kind of figure out. Or it, it, not even figure out. It really helps me just, like, not stress about it too much. Like, because, yeah, I, I don't know, I'm just not, I'm not a perfect artist when it comes to these things like i'm not in it for you know to be like the perfect vector artist i just want to make stuff yeah. that looks cool right at the end of the day they, 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 i've never met maybe there is out there but i've never met a perfect and that's the good thing there's no such thing mm. i don't think it's just it's you find your way and that's again why our lovely folks you know in the audience kind of you know tune into to watch you know someone new you know different designer you know different design process as well just to kind of see what you're about exactly um, and what are these numbers we're, we're digging with her? So I was uh, thinking yeah. about doing uh, like kind of like how, what are the odds of you pulling that specific character, right? So like one out of 10 boxes, one out of 25 boxes, one out of five okay. boxes. So you have a hard like chance that. of getting bubbly, but yeah. um, you know, just to give it some, <laughs> some depth, a little bit of yeah. stuff behind it, just an idea. Um, I feel like you've got a whole like campaign ready for this, but like it's just like <laughs> we're gonna have to go out and start doing some marketing flyers and <laughs> sorry, I love it. I love website it. banners. <laughs> That's so fun. Yeah, maybe changing up these colors a little bit. I think. See how this looks. Yeah, I think I like white text a little bit more. We've got a, a question from Anika who said, uh, "So where does Jacob?" get um their die lines from do they design the templates for each project get it for the printers the die lines i don't know if i'm as funny enough so i probably might not have the exact answer um do you explain again anika what you mean by i, I actually don't know as well actually um, i probably I know, you know i just might not know by name <laughs> perhaps it means that they gave the, i guess the way the box we made but um yeah oh, perhaps maybe, I see, I see. Anika maybe mention in another of a way or do it in the in the spirit of gifts i don't know i always find like <laughs> if you're not con unsure just do it in the spirit of emojis or gifts yeah um, but you know, explain again anik if you could let us know what what, what you mean um if we are actually... oh i'm sorry go ahead no no i was gonna say any more questions please do um if you're curious about what's happening or even you've got some advice or even you know tools that they could be using please do let us know in the uh 
in the chat. Sorry, buddy. What Absolutely. were you saying? I was gonna say, um, even if it's you know, if we if we are referring to in like the the grand or the direction of like the box layout. So what I ended up doing is um, I downloaded a uh, stock image from Adobe mm -hmm. Stock. Um, I am going to use a warp tool essentially to live trace or, or live. I, a plane trace. I'm not exactly sure what the name is. Essentially make a plane on that box and take these uh, front faces and then essentially drag them to the faces. So in this direction of actual manufacturing of this box, it's not necessarily the most efficient way. And that's why I'm being mm. loose. This is more to say, hey, I know you're a customer and I know you are someone that wants to see what this will look like here is mm -hmm. what this would look like this is what the this is to get an image in the head and then you know sending it off to a manufacturer or to a box company or someone that may dabble mm -hmm. in something like that you know handing it off sure sure I'm sending it off to because i don't know i always think i always get a bit nervous when you when you eventually send it off to the printer it's just like mm -hmm. you're kind of waiting and just thinking it's been sent to the gods and you just you just you're hoping it's going to come out in the way but print right you just kind of never know in that space how things could operate right um, so yeah it's it's always a tricky one and we figured out so yes yeah, so similar to what becca said actually and nika's actually kindly um explained again so the die lines which makes sense of course is essentially the template that you can use for any packaging design like a box gotcha. template for example so, the so we kind of covered that a bit as well so how things right. will kind of be cut um but i guess for, for in this stage obviously it's very much purely just more of a, a mock-up right which exactly you know we're not going to printers but um yeah it's a visual reference for now but um but yeah it's always good to kind of know those terminologies i always find especially if um you know these are kind of terms if you're quite new to it these are the things that it's kind of good to you know get your head around and to learn because that's kind of the um this kind of terminology that printers will always have to use so it's good to kind of get your head around mm -hmm. it if you're uh if you're very new to it keywords and like buzzwords in design are just so important like genuinely right like it's because knowing those i guess differences can really like make or break a project and communication open communication oh, at the end of the day right for sure i i i honestly have a good i mean and it's i feel like it's for my sanity that i have a good relationship with the printers that i work with for like mm -hmm. book design because you, i mean for anyone in the chat who works maybe in editorial or just works with printers in general quite a lot i'm sure you can understand when i say that it's having a good printer is so important and ones that you trust mm. and you know that if things go a bit wrong and hopefully it doesn't because you send it in the right way but if things do right. they will flag it um and you know you kind of just you kind of just rely on them to know that they'll do a good job um so yeah printers are our friends um, absolutely for sure because they, they are very very um necessary part of the process big time i mean and that that whole printing process is just a whole different ball field <laughs> Hell yeah that's that's another stream in itself yeah um so we've got a few well actually so uh, we had a uh i'm trying to scroll up actually we had a comment about the the name um oh yeah it was by easy where was it my eyes are blurring in there we go um expect <laughs> i remember that one expecto patrol arm is my favorite that's the one that saves you from the dementors oh. um isabel knows her harry potter wow that's that's yeah um, yeah you know your stuff man um i don't know i feel like expecto patrol could be expecto actually. oh i, I like that maybe because you're expecting good... some cool stuff in the package i don't know i don't look at me and i just that. make yeah so how <laughs> would you spell something. that how would how would uh how so you... expecto is e-x-p-e-c-t-o yes yeah, oh expecto. i like that i think that, that looks works fun. well it's nice yeah. and short as well it's not like it's a long because yeah. like, normally wants a long toy name right yeah expecto. so we can definitely like catchy short mm. easy and then we can maybe scale it up a little bit get some bleed Kind of goes with the eyes as well at like the fact. Yeah, it's it does. like he's just he's shifty, right? But he's like, right. like he's expecting something. I'm wondering. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. I so when I get into these these stages of the the design process too, especially when I'm like kind of just moving stuff around and kind of figuring out how I want it placed, mm. um, I tend to like, you know, resize and back up and look at it like from a perspective of okay if i saw this on the front of a box would it be catchy that whole like mm -hmm. you know supermarket like would i look at that and be like mm, i like that right and obviously devoid of color it's a little difficult and i think that kind of mm -hmm. helps me with the process of um making it from a bare bones interesting yeah. to me right so 
then we add this color it's like pop 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 right like but i like it though i mean it, it's funny because i guess a ghost would be white no i don't know yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. Like, we mix it up but i think um i don't know like it's i always think when you see a name of a brand i mean it's it's a toy company right so it can you mm -hmm. can you can kind of go all out really when it comes to it because it's a toy so it could be anything but i always kind of think if it relates to the actual product is the linkage obvious as well and um it's funny because actually on the, on the topic of names and this you'll find funny i think anika said um ex so expecto expecto e so add the y Ooh. i guess in keeping with all the name expecto. that's funny that's funny i like that <laughs> nice one, anika. yeah well was... i mean you got toy in there so ah that's sweet. i mean that's why right i imagine yeah. <laughs> anika you're a genius so that yeah, i guess smart. that's why we did it right super um, clever yeah i think that's that's the reason why um, if not, take credit for it because that is yeah. smart. Um, we won't say anything. I love um, that. And did you envision you've got obviously like the sample at the top and then the bottom? Do you, is that like a, a tag or what was your? Yeah, you so I was thinking that? of maybe putting some stuff like a tagline or something like that, or like you know giving details on the the figures themselves. So I could say like um, premium, premium mm. vinyl figures down here i think i can up that the weight of that mm. typeface a little bit go down to maybe jacob we're gonna have to get you back for like obviously after tomorrow's stream like another stream and then we'll have to actually make it in like 3d max. oh that'd can be you imagine, so like, the more, fun that would be awesome <laughs> yeah i mean making these characters in in the and there's cinema, right? Cinema 4D. Cinema 4D. Yeah, I mean, I that space of operating is a bit, bit beyond me. It's not my pay grade, <laughs> but I, I I can appreciate for sure those who kind of if it's Cinema 4D or Adobe Premiere Pro or um, right. Brain's gone dead. What's the other one? Premiere Pro and um, After Effects. That's it. Yeah, right. those kind of spaces oh, is just it's awesome. Um, I mean, mm. animated like what do you call it like mm. the carousels i think that's what it's called those are like i yeah. love those and actually uh, just just flag just to mention that as well i mean again on behance that's quite a nice way especially if you're quite new to to you know to the behance space the beauty of it is that you'll see a lot of different people working on different projects and also using different um, programs as well mm -hmm. so and usually on on behance it's quite nice because you can see the actual process behind how they got to the farm deliverable um so yeah if you're quite new to Behance, definitely have a good browse and obviously check out, you know, Jacob's stuff, um, you know, and everyone else in the chat, if they've got Behance um, profile pages, you know, check those out because yeah, it's all about kind of sharing work and then seeing what people think as well and, uh, and being oh, yeah. inspired. I would definitely say in terms of getting reference, like, or uh, just trying to feel inspired and, you know, getting your inspiration to just get up and draw, scrolling through mm -hmm. Behance, like genuinely, it was one of those things that I've used for a long time a long mm. long long time it's just making my own account was so because <laughs> you know like the you, case, isn't it? <laughs> yeah you have these people with these yeah. beautiful like absolutely beautiful like designed out layouts of all the projects they've ever done working with like these people and these people and these people and i'm like okay mm. i i have this one drawing that i did one time. <laughs> you know what i mean no, it, it, you know what it comes with time man like yeah, I, yeah. I feel like it's like yeah I don't know. I'm trying to think of a cool analogy. I have got nothing. It'd just be rubbish if I said anything. But, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I get what you mean. It is. We almost touched on it at the beginning stage of the stream where um, that almost imposter syndrome a little bit where right. you might have work and you're a bit shy or you're not too sure. And, you know, we touched it before, but I think mean, that's, you know, it, it's kind of a bit of a leap of faith. But also, mm -hmm. you know, you mentioned quite well when you said doing stuff because you want to do it, right? Exactly. And sharing it you know, for you and, and people will accept it, not accept it, but that's okay because you feel comfortable sharing it and you, you know, it's a nice place to kind of have work but also it's quite nice to kind of have a space online to kind of collate work as well do you know what i mean like even mm -hmm. if it's not like a website like a blog i always find that's quite nice to kind of have like a point of reference so you can just be like cool that and yeah. you can delete and you can change out but that's i think having that control is awesome and also it's one of those things too where like at the end of the day you know there are people looking there are people look like yeah. there are people that want to get work done that are looking through those profiles and it can be such a good um alternative to like creating a full website to you know like make host your portfolio like and i mean mm. if i'm not mistaken behance is free too so it's just like 
is you know <clears throat> go for it right free as a free as a bird and i think exactly. um, and you never know you mentioned like you know you upload work who knows what can come from it people could vibe from it collaborations could come from it i think that's the the beauty. a bit like when you mentioned about how you organically you know made that connection with your friend who you work with mm -hmm. now it's it's you never know these opportunities where things could lie so um so yeah you're in the right place in terms of being inspired on adobe live but um but yeah check out more adobe lives and by all means check out more behance um, oh, yeah. so yeah i think we're actually and, getting to a good point over here now too is what's really exciting it's looking good i might admit so i like how you got that sort of curve on the um expect <laughs> yeah thinking, is expect expect toy how do you i mean it's your brand man how do you want it to, how should we be saying it I what are like you thinking expect toy I would think ex expect toy, right? Expect, yeah, that's cool. Like, I mean, would it need like a, a dash in between the scenes? You know what? Know. That's probably not a bad idea. Like that. Expect toy, yeah. Expect toy. <laughs> Just keep saying expect toy. Yeah. Until it sounds realized. good. Um, Maybe we can yeah. see what the audience thinks with or without the dash. Yeah. Good shout. Yeah. What are you guys thinking? Um, is it obvious when you've got expect? toy i mean yeah you let us know i'm not gonna influence i nearly did that that was terrible you let us know in the <laughs> chat what do, does it work well with a dash in between so it separates the two or are you thinking it's obvious not needed let us know um and also just kind of flag which anika's kindly put in the chat we've got 15 minutes uh for our gotcha. stream which is mental how quickly the first day is flying gone, by flying any by. questions you guys have um please put in the chat it could be anything really related to, to design it could be um, design related or game related, anything really related to design. Um, yeah. Let us know in the chat. Um, and people are in the chat. It's it's already looking quite obvious what everyone's thinking, but I think uh, without actually. Without? Nice. Yeah, okay. actually. That's interesting. Nice. The plot thickens. Good to know. Nice. So we'll just do because I liked how. Ah, okay. Go. Becca's made a nice little um, um, option here as well. She said that uh, you can make toy perhaps a different color, or and obviously we're not working oh, with colors. Oh yeah, but I mean like, like a, a different shade. You know, yeah, exactly. A great idea. That. Like a gray or so yeah, something that works well. But um, good shout. That's a really good shout. Yeah, no kidding. Um, I mean that's the beauty. Right? You don't have to be so literal sometimes with design where it could be it could be as little as changing a shade or color or or a shape or a size where maybe like that in in itself this is enough. Yeah. Yeah. I'm That's liking cool. how that looks a lot, honestly. Yeah, yeah that's Becca. great. Becca's on fire today. Yeah, I mean, oh, yeah. there's a few gems that's the come. Best. You've all had some gems today, but yeah, it's it's been looking good. It's been looking good. Yeah, and what I'm thinking too, you know, having the front a little repetitive, but like honing in kind of like what what we want out of this brand. We want you to buy every single one of them. <laughs> Especially like Bubbly. You can't let him oh, just... Oh, yeah. So do He's you envision... The... It's obviously... Oh, sorry. Go for it, buddy. I was just gonna say he's the chase variant. <laughs> he's, a, <laughs> he's the one that everyone needs to get. Um, mm -hmm. I was gonna say I know it's obviously a you know a made up made up project, but do you envision it like each package per toy? Is that all? Because obviously some of the characters will be in the boxes, but do you use it like a one 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 package per toy kind of thing? Yeah, that's or, what I was thinking. Like kind of like blind box style, you know, like um, having like the the big box full of like the little boxes and with the bags in the inside and you rip them open it's like oh which one am i gonna get type thing uh, okay cool yeah it's yeah. like my and the whole expecting expect toy right yeah maybe cool. maybe some like you know um some what's the word i'm looking for environmentally friendly packaging <laughs> that's my only gripe when it comes to figures and toys is just it's so much packaging so sad <laughs> that's a that's a very good point i think mean, for anyone i'm curious if anyone in the chat is from like a packaging background but yeah that's Ooh. something that i don't know we should all be very conscious about the materials and you know how environmentally friendly is it actually when you're Ooh. in that space it can look amazing but if it's not good for the planet please don't do it yeah. <laughs> i mean planet. yeah absolutely and i also think mm. we're getting at like kind of a good point here like looking at it lined out like like i said i like backing out and seeing it obviously it's gonna look flat 2d blah blah mm. blah but like you know, I can see like walking through a toy store, looking on the left, and be like, "Oh, expect yeah. toy premium figures." So I'm I'm five oh, yeah. years and older. I could play with it. <laughs> so, it's like I just about make the cusp of that yeah, age, yeah, but I'm gonna treat right myself. To yeah, <laughs> and then the left side, you know, uh, <laughs> having that general um, characters that you can get, and then on the right, you know, I think we have a little bit of work to do on the right side. I think we can like cool. you know add something there. Mm. um 
We could, um, I mean, I, I feel like by all means, I want us to, to do it, but I feel like we're in that sort of space where it'd be good to do like a little a recap. And by all means, you know, we yeah. are here for tomorrow as well, so we can continue. But perhaps when we do like a little nice little recap um, Absolutely. that we worked on from a bit of today, and then we'll do like a nice little wrap up. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to do so, the wrap or the, the recap. So essentially, you know, like what we started working on, what we tried to accomplish is essentially getting our general idea down for a toy company, uh, our blind box company we're trying to get the um you know the typeface that we want to use we want to have the name the general layout the character designed itself and getting them laid out on the actual figure or on the actual box itself our artboards mm -hmm. getting a general idea down of what we want using samples to fill in what we don't know um and getting our grayscale down so we can kind of get some depth and some contrast into the actual design itself we have our front face right here, Expect Toy, uh, premium vinyl nice. figures. Make sure you collect them all. I think Expect Toy was a great name. We have the first series, of course, because this is our first time doing this. Nice. We have for ages five and up, of course. So youngins in the chat can't get in on this one. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we're we left have... out now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and in the uh, center, uh, we have the actual characters that we came up with the names for their mm. pull rates so one out of five boxes you'll get floaty one out of ten you'll get gordy and then the special variant bubbly nice. one out of 25 and then this is more for maybe a top view a side view mm. we want to utilize as many characters as we can mm. uh the best we can because we did draw these we put in the effort for them so we might as well display them mm. um and i i think that you know that covers at least what I think we did. Do you have anything yeah. you want to add on to it? No, I think it's um. what was awesome is that, because I know at the beginning, we didn't know what the name would be, right? And I right. think that's the beauty of like when you're, and that's the beauty of a lot of these streams that when you're designing and you're seeing process, things just kind of come from nowhere, right? And now we've kind of worked. And even the fact that I think it was Becca who made the, the suggestion of, you know, shading the toy out. Yeah. Just so there's a differentiation. Idea. It's, that's the beauty of a stream where we work with it, where you can kind of see, you know, how it, how it operates. Um, Sorry, how it, how it kind of looks. And sits, but um, I mean, I'd be quite curious to know. Obviously, for so for a bit of tomorrow, obviously we want to keep it a little bit of a surprise for tomorrow. But yeah. like, can you give us a little bit of a uh, a little taste of maybe what we're doing for tomorrow a little bit? Yeah, in I terms mean, of what you've so been I think we're going to get into more of the real aspect of it. Like, what is this really going to look like? You know, so okay. we're going to be working in a little bit of Photoshop. You know, maybe doing some fun, like visualizing getting to refine nice. it, you know, working in the, with that coolers app, you know, really getting deep into the actual nice. design process and setup of this, this company and getting it kind of so see it come to life. It. Right. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I think that's, that's cool as well, because again, for those who are quite new to like this Adobe live, um, sort of seeing how two programs, or just programs in general, how they can kind of interlink, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, today we mean primarily an illustrator, but you know, like you said, tomorrow, a bit of Photoshop and we can kind of see how, um, the two are quite intuitive, right? In terms of how you operate, because the two, right. and well, not just the two, also, you know, most of programs, they can kind of inter integrate with one another. Um, so yeah, I think that's quite a good thing for anyone to sort of tune in and, and see as well in general. Um, yeah. I was going to ask, in terms of, uh, oh, I've actually got a question there actually. So, oh, nice. Uh, what if there was a glow in the dark version of, <laughs> what if there was a glow fun. in the dark version of floaty? Could be a secret, could be a secret wear one. I like wear. that. Yeah, maybe we can add cool. that on there somewhere on the box. That is a solid, little black solid. silhouette, and it says premium yeah. or I don't know, like special edition, something like that. I feel like Alex is he's he's done these before. I mean, I feel like he's maybe created. Yeah, <laughs> maybe he's African working on the, some toys. Yeah, <laughs> this is research about. right now. This is like a bit of market research. Yeah, it's that's awesome. Working. Um, but yes, I would say so. We'll do like a nice little wrap up now. Um, so again, obviously a massive thank you for you know for tuning in. Um, and even better, um, we'll be back tomorrow um, at 12 p.m. Uh, Pacific for part two uh, with Jacob. And like we said, obviously we're working a bit more in Photoshop. So you guys will see how the two can work. Um, but Jacob, how have you found it for your first day, man? How have you found it? It's the first great. Day I mean, I've had a ton of fun. I love the yeah. feedback that we've got. I love like, it seems like there's some really talented artists in the chat, which is really cool with some great insight. I mean, I think it's just a blast. Like, I love toys i love figures i love like cartoony stuff like so getting to bring this to life like with an audience and with participation and thinking like this mm. isn't just my brain this is a amalgamation of adobe fans yeah. and brains like you know and our whole 
Behance friends. This is really cool. I think it's a blast. I had a lot of fun. And that's the thing. Now, now that you've now that it's looking so awesome, especially for people tuning in tomorrow, they're gonna want to have this now. Jacob, as yeah, a <laughs> yeah. You may you've set the tone now. You're gonna have to have this as like a send out to everyone. Yeah, <laughs> Put your mailing address really, in the chat. It'd be really that, cool. But... <laughs> I mean, we. I mean, here's the thing. Okay, we. I do have some friends with some vinyl printers. You know, so maybe we can get something. <laughs> fun. Don't promise Jacob things if it's not gonna. <laughs> I love Fingers that. Crossed. All right. So on that note, um, so I don't be live back tomorrow for a new episode uh, of Get Social with Andy Lambert and Jordan Ellis on Adobe Express channel. So Jacob, my man, it's been a pleasure to host you for the first day. We're back awesome. tomorrow, like we said, our friends. Um, and of course, massive thank you to everyone in the chat, because without you guys, there is no stream, right? So tune us for tomorrow. We'll see you there. Um, and of course, while moderator for everything running smoothly in the chat. So uh, on that note, we'll see you tomorrow, my friends, for part two and uh have a good day or evening wherever you are in the world. Ciao.